Right. Um, Aaron sat next to me playing Diablo. Is that audible? I no, haven't heard her no, one thing. Also, I'm it looks up. like Erin's okay. been crushing it. She's like level thirty-two. Quite She's hiding than me. Fuck's sake! <laughs> In one day, <laughs> I've got three characters, and my highest is like my my sorcerer, who's like level thirty-one or something. Damn. <laughs> Uh, no, Diablo is easy. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, Steve, yeah, you... you're already higher level than him. <laughs> <laughs> How much did you pay for early access, Steve? <laughs> I'm hey, playing Street, Street Fighter on the weekend. I was going to say, I've enjoyed Street Fighter though. It's fun. No, yeah, so, uh, it, to be fair, like he has made the correct choice. <laughs> I've been playing no. both. No, yeah. I've been playing both and Sounds really like big. he just took a twenty pound note and threw it in the toilet. <laughs> no, I got cosmetics for it. As yeah, you well. got that horse, probably. Oh right. Yeah, Is there a horse or something? I don't know. Some horse. I also you bought a horse. horse today because I donated uh, two gift subs to Astarte, which meant I got a horse code <laughs> like uh with their drops channel program as Wait, well. She's on that list? Maybe yeah, I'm on that list. Bent's could. Yeah, you could just oh Go to the Google. Oh, doc I don't and... care. That's really that's really cool because you were gonna you, you, were, you were gonna donate two subs to her anyway, but now you get a free horse out of it, so that's cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, stream at this. Let's have a look. So have a it sounds look. like you paid ten dollars for horse armor. I did, yes, and I enjoyed. Oh it. no, we've come full circle. <laughs> I hate this timeline we're in. <laughs> I saw it's a. Pretty um... funny. This go, is uh, this is like. <laughs> this is gonna sound like first world. No, it's not a first world problem, but because I got sent a key and people keep saying like, "Oh, did you? So you, did you get skins with that?" And I'm like, "I don't know." <laughs> uh, you're not on the list. No I idea. Yeah. Who cares? <laughs> they sent me all the skins, but I don't use any of them. Yeah, that... I mean, it's just a shame they didn't send me any like you know gems or anything. Kind of. Just send you the little really statue like... that everyone's name's going to be on. <laughs> Do you see the news story? The guy, the first guy to get it, apparently exploited it or something, and they've said they're taking it off. I kind of like because he didn't. They, he's... they were okay. The of it in. <laughs> I heard bits and pieces about this. I don't know how I feel about that because I feel like if it's a glitch that he's discovered, I'm kind of like, uh, keep him on anyway. Fuck it. It's one name out of a hundred. Um. But I but I feel like if they don't say like, hey, that's not cool, everyone will just do yeah, that. Yeah. Also, if, the if game he's... launches today, and everyone will just exploit, and then it'll mean nothing. Yeah. If he's actively exploiting, which he was, I think they should take it away. Part of if me he thinks killed like... a mob and it leveled him up eight times, I'd be like, well, you know, sometimes you just get lucky. See, I'm the other way around. I feel like if some guy found an exploit. And then grinded the same thing for four days. I'm like, uh, fine. But if, but if there's like a bug where it's like, I killed two mobs and hit level 100, then I'm like, oh, okay. I think it's something to do with like, again, I don't know the whole story, but if he just did something monotonous for four days, yeah, then I don't know for some well, reason. It's even worse because the, the exploit he did required other people actively. Oh, okay. It, yeah, it, I'm sure we can. You found a new story, right? Uh no, I'm sure we can. Talk There's just about gonna it. be like a big Diablo section and a big wow. Street Fighter section, and then if we haven't been talking for like five hours at that point, we'll do some like news stories, I guess. Oh <laughs> yeah, because that's like it's it's one of those weeks that come along occasionally where it's like yeah, the the big games are starting to come out, and I think there's probably a lot to be said. About yeah, the, all of these games. Big, big games, plus also we're just about to hit um, announcement season, so it's like, yeah, it's quiet other than the big games. Yeah, Jeff Keighley's getting out his big Santa sack of games. <laughs> he's, he's getting ready. He's just going to start throwing out God knows what, Halo Infinite 2s and uh, Torok sequels. I don't know where I'm going with this. We need to Do you think we're going to get anything big this year? I hope so. We're going to get anything really big. I, I'm hoping that there's been enough Bloodborne. Not that I'd even play it. I don't fucking. Care. Oh my god, give it up, please! <laughs> I want Bloodborne just because I'm like everyone wants it so badly. I'm Christ. like peer pressure. If we can, if they can peer pressure classic WoW into existence, they can peer pressure Bloodborne. I'm pretty like sure PC. you can emulate Bloodborne on PC at like 60 F. Like, what do people want at this point? Do they want a full on remake? Want to pay they want... 60 pounds for it. Yeah, yes. Yeah. 
I, it's just, Bloodborne has literally become a meme at this that's, point. Yeah, yeah. I think that's why I love it because it is a meme now. I feel like it would come out and it'd be like, yeah, it sold pretty, Silk pretty well. It's not as fun to chant for Bloodborne PC HD rebooted. Yeah, but, I feel, I feel, but like, I want to Silk Song. Silk Song is real, right? Whereas I firmly believe real that there is in there is like n- no Bloodborne port is being worked on. No, there's no. It's not even no. like pre-production yeah the, the, the yeah, offices yeah. are all shut the pcs are turned off it's not but, happening but that's what i mean like wouldn't it be like the hypest fucking shit if they announced it like I've, is there anything else that would reach that level of hype that audiences would scream for like, i don't not think at the 90, moment i don't think anyone cares about it beyond the little twitter bubble that we're in i, I really don't <laughs> think that many people care about it I it's think... just an easy one to be like yeah, yeah do it yeah just, yeah, exactly. just raw numbers it's like, like you know, FF Seven remake. Yeah. Like people talk about it like it's that, right? Yeah. But it's not yeah. on that level. <laughs> the numbers is not there. No. It's it's a weird. Do you see? Do you see the the that guy like tweeted out? Oh, Final Fantasy Nine remake is real and it's happening. I they did. Yeah, that was. Oh, they've been talking works. about that. Fucking no, that was. Oh, what's his yeah. name? It's the guy that. Is actually the guy that leaks like industry man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder what they would do with an FF of the leaker remake. Like, do you just do a really, really fancy remaster, or do you like FF Seven it? Surely, you surely they say something like FF remake, and it's got to be a big. A, that's like it comes with expectations at this point, right? But yeah, because yeah, it's we had the FF Eight remake where they did basically just up scale the models yeah right? they remastered it and just yeah made the place they've also done nicer they've also done a hd uh up res of nine i think it's on pc right they've done, yeah, mo- they done most of it at this point i think yeah yeah Wait, did it wasn't nine also getting a tv series as well what the, what are you what? talking about <laughs> there was a, there was a... no you're Talks thinking you're, you're nine... thinking you're thinking of silent hill <laughs> No, um, there was a night. There nine was like TV nine TV show. Series. It was like a kids' TV show, though. So it was like, see, <laughs> it's getting right. weirder and weirder. Oh, he's right. Final Fantasy Nine animated. Show. Oh my god, you're joking. Continued. Mm. Uh, I can't. I'm stuck. I'm ad blocked right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, okay, uh, I apologize. I, I think Steve. it's like a I young, I think it's. I think it's going to be targeted towards a younger audience, though. So it's not going to be like announced hype, June twenty twenty one. Uh. There we go. No, I'm trailer. sorry, Steve. Like, it's like nothing. There's nothing here for it, but yeah. Because <laughs> that, that, get announced. That literally sounds like a meme. You know, right? I, I've never heard of that ever. Why would they pick nine of all of them? Because they can do some hot Quinn X Beatrice action. That's mm, no one's. I don't think anyone's <laughs> asking for that. <laughs> okay, I okay. I always thought that. Um, I thought the the. The favorite FFs was seven, ten, nine. The rest of them, <laughs> I guess, fourteen <laughs> in there somewhere. But I, I was reading because of that announcement. I was reading about it, and apparently nobody likes nine apart from me. No, I thought nine was really popular. I like nine. I li- no nine's really nine is liked. I don't think it's love. If that makes sense, because yeah, like, think- eight is the one I always. Nobody talks about eight. Yeah, eight, eight is the eight. one that gets ragged on. Yeah, right, eight, okay. eight might as well not exist. I feel like everyone remembers ten because ten was like holy shit. Ten PS, was PS2, PS2 graphics. Yeah. Games Voice will acting. never look better yeah, than yeah. this kind of thing. Yeah, let's ball. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like oh my god, get, graphics have peaked. Don't even make a PS3. What the fuck's the point? <laughs> it cannot get better than this. Just let me watch that opening, uh, that opening cutscene with the yeah Not Ramstein music over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, oh my god, I thought Square Enix's The Bouncer was the pinnacle of graphics, but then I topped it, topped it with Final Fantasy X. Jesus. The <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I love that game so much. I don't remember anything about it. It was just some weird janky PS2 launch beat 'em up called The Bouncer, and everyone had a gallon of hair gel. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. What fucking weird game. All right, let's. Oh, we're getting. On, let's get this started. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Game Forecast our weekly gaming podcast where we get together and chat about what we've been playing and all the new stuff that's been announced. My name is Josh, aka Bottlerworks, and I'm here with Olive Meister Will. Hey yo No yeah. Quick week, Steve. Hi, my name is Steve and I'm a fighter in the streets and a Diablo in the sheets. 
and Sam Sammer. Hello. Right, we're not going to do individual games this week because it is fairly clear what everyone mm-hmm. has been playing. Basically, we're going to do maybe two big-ish sections. We're going to do Diablo Four, and then we go into Street Fighter Six off of that. So I think everyone here, apart from myself, has played Diablo Four. So we'll go. We'll start straight into that one. I'm just going to like throw the ball out. How have you? How have you all been finding Diablo Four? This it's game good. is great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love setting it. Okay. I, love, I love setting you all up to just all talk over each other. I love it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Took the floor. Yeah, all too polite. Just chaos. Yeah. Has um, my first question really has just has the launch been been smooth in terms of the early access? Yes. Silky smooth. Not a, not a single. I think I got in a less than a minute queue for about 10 seconds once. And I think that was a bug. And other than that, I've had no problems. Well, you say you say smooth though. There have been some issues where you've had to, where people have had to like leave, abandon quests and repick them up. But oh, there's a couple of mixed, like yeah. minor, yeah, like bugs, but nothing like it's no not like server issues. Yeah, servers haven't gone down at any point. Yeah, or at least not when I've been playing. Um, even I thought it was like because uh, it was early access for the rich people on Friday, and mm-hmm. then general release was this morning and it was like all the time i was playing early access i was like ah oh, this 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 is all gonna we don't know how good we have it right it's all gonna collapse come tuesday when the plebs get in um but it's no it's been absolutely woke up this morning boot up Aaron boot up no problems i i am yeah. surprised at the amount of people that have jumped into early access i th- i thought like i'd see a handful of people playing and then mm. everyone would jump in today but like well, everyone seems to be playing as of Friday. It's because it's because it, like week right weekend right. Everyone's yeah. like, well, what am I, what am I gonna do? Mm-hmm. Not play Diablo over the weekend and then have to sit on it all week. Yeah, so, they know what they're doing. Yeah, they know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> My exact issue was is I could play it today after work and not really actually get to play it until Friday evening. Yeah, mm. or play it over the weekend. Yeah, it's it's an obvious choice for for most people. I feel it's, it seems like a yeah. way just to, they found a way to artificially inflate the price of their game up up to whatever it yeah, is like eighty quid or a, whatever. Yeah, there's a bunch of games do this now. Like I remember Forza does it for people who are like jonesing to get in <laughs> to, yeah. to their racing game. But <laughs> yeah, I I don't I don't know. On the one hand, it's kind of I'm like I don't like that. There's this like yeah, Diablo's out in a week. Uh, unless you pre-order this expensive version, then it's out yeah. in two days. You know, you just see, for you. But I, I think the the pre-order early access. I think well, the the more expensive edition early access. I think it's fine. The one thing with this particular game, though, is the statue drama, where it's like, oh, it's basically you're paying to you need you need to pay the extra ten pound if you want any chance to get on that statue. Or, or, or... They made a competition out of it and be like, well, yeah, you need you know. That part, so I'm a bit like. Or we'll, we'll, we'll jump into. I'm going to try and like somewhat all this. We'll jump into that weird drama bit a bit later. Um, yeah. Let's do just like an update first. How far is are you all in this game? Like, will um, how, will how far are you? Uh, so it's kind of so finish the campaign, um, and then post campaign, there's a lot of like end game activities that you can do sort of thing and i'm sort of knee deep in those at the moment i'm level 60 no 58 or something of 100 where, where, uh, were, you, campaign, where were you at when you finished it the what campaign level? sort of ends like 48 to 50 i would say it's sort yeah. of where you're sort of supposed to end you can grind a lot and get obviously higher than that but um around about 50 is the end of the campaign okay uh, yeah do you think most people will push forward after 50 to hit level 100 does it say like you know game's not over by the way keep playing um, it does kind of post campaign it does kind of breadcrumb you a little bit um because there's like they i do don't know if you remember well. in the old yeah in the old diablos it was like you just finish the campaign up a difficulty campaign again up a difficulty and then there was like adventure mode and then you sort of progressed yeah. through the difficulties every time it got easy you buffed it a little bit and then, you know, ran it again right. sort of thing. 
This one is more like, uh, it's kind of more structured where you finish the campaign, um, all the way through the campaign, you've had access to world tier one and two, which is like, you know, one is normal, two is like hard, although saying hard in Diablo is like sort of, you know, <laughs> it's not really, but uh, at least not during the campaign. Um, and then when you finish that, it gives you uh campaign's done and it goes like hey here's some end game activities also it, at some point there is a dungeon that we've unlocked which is like a um it's like a wild dungeon basically and yeah. if you complete that you unlock world tier three which is like double xp more loot drops uh what is it uh somewhere else or somewhere else just everything uh, ranks up a little bit just everything gets a bit harder yeah and then it's like and then once you've done that a bunch we'll give you another dungeon and then you can get to four and then at some point i think uh they'll, they'll add more they'll add yeah, yeah they'll add more um and i and it's so it i i don't know if people will get to 100 because it does kind of slow down uh post 50 because 50 up to 50 you're just leveling like normal and then post 50 it's all every level <laughs> you're now investing uh in the paragon system which is every quarter of a level you get a paragon point to put on your Jesus. paragon board i sound like an insane person there's a whole other <laughs> system Basically. for these paragon boards which is pretty cool and really in depth um, yeah and that's that's how progression works but it does and it so it it's like you're getting these paragon points at quite a rapid rate, but you are leveling up about like four times slower, sort of. You're right. Sort of, not quite. But <laughs> this sounds yeah. insane. <laughs> it's, it's, it feels slower because you're supposed to hit the higher tiers, yeah, so that you're getting more exp. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um. It 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 does. It all sounds like like trying to explain this is there's this whole thing where you get a paragon point. And it's like the sphere grid from Final Fantasy. Right? Oh, yeah. Give you a reference you can understand. Um, where you're kind of making your way, you're picking like adjacent nodes in a grid and making your way up a tree. And then at some point, you get to a connector. And if you click that, it goes, right, what's your next board? And then you select a board and you can rotate it any way you want. And all, there's like eight different boards per class. They all have their own unique oh, perks that oh, you get for. God. And it sounds. Trying to explain this to it's, people, it's it the makes you sound like an in the insane world. person. Yeah. But it does, like, it drip feeds you all these mechanics at a pace where it feels like completely natural just to engage with all these things. It doesn't feel uh, like it's too much at any point. Um, no, yeah, you, you're, you're, you're again, explaining. By, by this point, all you've got to worry about is the Paragon board. So it yeah. might sound like much, but you've completely offloaded everything else. Right. Yeah, yeah. So it. And, it's so easy to manage. And it's like, it, you are still... The Paragon board is like, you can't do it wrong. Um, you could do it like inefficiently, but every time you put a point in, you are just gaining power. Is, so it, it's is it endless? Like, is, is Paragon limitless? No. There is, you get, you, there's max of 100. You get a bunch for like exploring the map and stuff. Um, and I think it's like 250 points max or something. Uh, okay. And also but, you can refund them, like your skill points. Yeah. So yeah. if you're like, oh, I've really bulls this up, you can just go, oh, right, undo. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there's no, it's not like Path of Exile, mm. there's no commitment at any, but like all the way through the campaign, I was playing it through with three other people, and all the time it was like, right, five minute, five minute respec, respec break, five minute respec break, and we'd all go get a drink and like, a manar about our talent trees for a bit and be like, mm, maybe I want to yeah, no, I'd, maybe I want to be a lightning mage for the rest of this dungeon or something, you yeah. know what I mean? It was, it's, yeah, super fun to engage with. You can, like, I feel like they've hit a good balance where um, something like Path of Exile is way, way too complicated for someone like me, um, but Diablo 3 was a bit too simple in that it sort of, it, there wasn't really room to make fun builds it was just kind of like pick all the fun skills you don't really and this is like a good middle ground where if you want to just pick the big flashy smash things skills and go ham you can totally do that and if you want to min max uh like synergies and 
a pour over items to see which one like oh this gives me three percent crit but this gives me four percent attack speed and which one's better for my build you can totally do that as well um yeah so you can pick how, it, you, you, both you, of them are viable yeah it's got all the different things different people might be looking for in yeah. these types yeah. of games yeah I, it sounds yeah. it sounds crazy good and just a reminder that, that all this Paragon stuff is level 50. It takes like a little while to get there and you can just enjoy the game, you know, like yeah, slowly. Can... Like this is end game stuff. Yeah. yeah, you can totally just play through the campaign. Although oh. I think if we want to talk about like, I feel like the campaign is the weaker part of the game. Um, yeah. It just feels like, you know the the sort of opening couple of cutscenes. You played the beta, right? Yeah, yeah. I played, um, I played the beta and a little bit of Act One. The the production values for the campaign are pretty great, and it kind of sets up uh, like characters that you're sort of interested in, but yeah. then they don't really go anywhere. Oh, um, really? They front load all the cool shit to get, see, I... get you in, and then. <laughs> I really enjoyed the story. I, I enjoyed the story it. Was really good. But I it it was very like it was like summer blockbuster kind of enjoyment. It wasn't like a Call of Duty I'm campaign not be, enjoyment. <laughs> Call of Duty campaign is a good yeah, it's yeah, like I'm not yeah. gonna be thinking about the Diablo 4 campaign, which is fine because that's not what you come to these games for, right? The the campaign is almost like That's what I do. <laughs> a, a very extended tutorial for this game sort of thing. Um but it just, I don't know, all the marketing and stuff and all the great cutscenes, I was like set up to be really invested in this story. And then I just, I was like, ah, that was neat. Uh, it doesn't, because I think the problem is the, the first big reveal of this, they showed the first CG cutscene where it's the guys in the tomb, uh, you know, oh, they, yeah, they yeah, reveal... Yeah. The, the big bad the blood and it's a very and cool cutscene and, yeah. it's, it's totally badass I love it and then the second time they demoed this game they showed the only other CG cutscene <laughs> oh, no. and it's like you, you watch the first CG cutscene <laughs> you play through the whole game waiting for the next CG cutscene and then that plays, and then the game is basically over. Yeah, because yeah, because it was the, is... it was the three dudes getting bl blood webbed. Yeah, and then yeah. the second cutscene, which I remember, it's like yeah, it's like the hell fight. With yeah. a whole bunch of demons versus angels or something. That yeah. was yeah. That, those... Which is like <laughs> one of the sickest cutscenes. Both of them are just insanely cool. But that's watching it. The game, watching those gives me shivers. Like it's so cool. But that's it. <laughs> that's so the rest disappointing of it to is, hear. There is there is um uh it it's not as bad as it sounds though because the game is really 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 good looking. I cannot stress enough. This might be one of like this is easily the best action RPG I've ever played. But it's like up there for just a really, I don't want to say like the best game I've ever, the best looking game I've ever played, but like sometimes you'll be walking around. I was, it was like, I was showing it to Aaron earlier. We were in this like random basement of a hovel that was infested with demons <laughs> and stuff. And I was like, look at how many tiny bespoke little assets they made just for this one scene there's like tables table knocked over some chairs like eight different types of chairs there's like wine racks with bottles and i was like this feels this this looks insane like yeah, when you yeah. actually just stop and zoom in and it's the same all over like if you just run around the big cities and you'll be like they've made so many different types of buildings and there's villages everywhere and there's all these guards and like this game looks so good <laughs> I can't stress it enough. So when it's like most of the cutscenes are in engine, it's not like terrible. It's just um a it's little the disappointing. It's because the CG is so good. That's yes, that's yeah, why. Yeah. Like yeah, for, pretty for, much. Bl yeah. Blizzard have always been insanely good at their CG cutscenes. They're yeah. one of those like companies yeah. that people always scream at to make a movie or something. Yeah, they do oh, they totally should. They totally mm. should. Yeah. Um But yeah, also I so yeah, campaign is is fine. How are you finding? Right. How are you, Steve? You're you're very early on. How are you finding the campaign so far? What are you playing? Um, how are you finding ooh. it? Well, I I've been playing both Street Fighter and Diablo, so I'm a bit further behind than everyone else. But um, I started off as Barbarian, um, and I struggled because I've been playing solo, so I struggled a bit with that, like in combat. Um, I got that to like level eighteen, I think, and then I switched to Rogue. 
struggled a bit with that. So <laughs> I got that to level 12. <laughs> so I switched to Sorcerer and I'm level 31 at the moment. I've got to the main town and then just literally gone around doing side quests, statues of Lilith, yeah. um, dungeons. I and yeah. I'm yeah, so I I've still got a lot of the, the campaign to do. I'm just having fun going around like doing the side stuff, honestly, well, like getting the map progress. Like what yeah. is what is yeah. the general gameplay loop of this game? So like you're in a town, you're giving quests is that mm-hmm. kind of the deal you just go around and it's, do no not, no there's not too many quests it's more like oh you might have one or two quests and like there's a lot of exploring but i think like the main thing is like what will's been doing and sam which is like they do the end game stuff right like you go do dungeons you go do the world events the world uh, bosses um, but i mean like I, I mean, I, I, yes I, but that's that's end game there yeah. is so much to do up to that point what, yeah, I'm try- yeah. what I'm trying to think of is just like if someone listening to this does not have this game and buys it, what can they actually expect the first like ten hours to actually look like for them? That isn't Paragon and this. Oh, and that. It, it is like it is kind of well, it it, it it's like open world at the, this time instead of uh, random yeah, level based. Open world as well. Yeah. yeah, and the open world is is cra- is made. It's not generated this time. So it's like um, you get in, you have a big map. Uh, every uh, instead of being divided into acts, the levels they're all connected. You can just run straight to Act Three if you want. Okay, oh, I don't know why you would. Yeah. yeah, you totally can. Yeah, it doesn't stop you. I oh. mean, it stops you because of level gates. Yeah, you just get, like you get that, slapped but... by a skeleton and like, oh, okay, exactly. I'll leave. <laughs> and die. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it doesn't it doesn't stop you. You can just run from Act Four to One to Five to whatever you want. Um, and every act. Is a section of the world map, and those sections all have like uh, dungeons. Uh, uh, what else are there? Like, there, like waypoints, quests, statues. points of interest, collectible statues, and things. And it's like um, you have a main quest which is pulling you through. Uh, it's always on your map, and it's always like, hey, if you want to keep progressing, go here. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of pulling you through. If you fo- it very naturally follows it. If you follow it, it takes you through like one, two, three. Yeah, acts. but you don't have to. But you don't have to. Um, that's cool. I like that idea. If I, yeah, if I, remember, kinda... I, might, I might be wrong, but did you did you have to like do quests in Diablo three to move on to following acts? Yeah, you did. You, you, could, you, could, you had, you to, had to, to do the main the story. story. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. can just like like yeah. you're, like you're describing where it's like I'm going to wander to hell at level one. You can yeah. just do that in. The previous games, and right? To be fair, it is all open, but you do have to do the story to get to endgame once. But once you've done that, all subsequent characters, there's a tick box at the start that's like, hey, I don't care about the story. Just yeah. dump me in the map. I'll let me, do let me roam, yeah. Let me roam, let me do side quests, let me do endgame activities from level one. Because everything scales as well. And it's mm. Yeah, it's that nice. is by far and away the best thing about this game is the scaling. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, every it's fun. zone. Yeah, tell us about that. Tell us about that. Yeah. At, because it's act based, every zone has like a, a minimum level. So, like, you know, if, if you go to act where act five is, it'll be like, well, the enemies here are level 30 and you're only level one. Yeah, we're, <laughs> but if you want to scale it down to level, to level one. Yeah. 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 But if you're level 33, the enemies are level 33. Okay. So it like it, it scales it up to you, but not down to you. So by that logic, yeah. can, you, so like, can, still... can you choose where you want to grind? Then basically, like yeah. I like this yeah. area, oh, so yeah. I want to stay oh, here. Oh yeah. Okay. You, 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 this is kind of. I don't want to say it's like a make your own adventure because it's got a main story, but it's like you you could quote unquote ignore the story. Yeah. Um. You still have to do it to unlock Endgame. Like you physically have to have completed the story to unlock Endgame. Yeah. But you could choose to go and do side content all the way up to like level sixty, and then be like, right, time to go and do the main story. Well, isn't like yeah. isn't World of Warcraft kind of like that these days? Where if you start from level one in World of Warcraft, because there's so much content, they're like, right, you're this level. Where do you want to go? Here are three different expansions to choose from. Yeah. All like, the expansions. Yeah, where do, you, where, do, where, do, yeah. where do you want to go to? What story sounds interesting? What do you want to do? Yeah, but sort I, of. I think they had to just because they have so much content that wasn't being used. Yeah. 
So, I th- this this is yeah, this is more like there is a structure, but once you are, um, you you can you can basically choose like I want to mainline the story or I want to just dick around and do side content for fifty levels or whatever you want, you know? Yeah. Um, um. So what? Um. So what class are you playing, Sam? Me, I am barbarian. Yeah. Um, so you're barbarian. Steve sorcerer, and I'm I pick necro. Yeah. Is, how how are you finding like the 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 class the classes <laughs> so the the start for barbarian was so rough yeah um you were saying i saw you saying in uh will's chat about how you were just dying loads on yeah, the early bosses like, there there was now apparently there is a, a boss that I fought that was known to be like the barbarian killer, <laughs> and I was struggling, man. Mm-hmm. I was struggling on this fight, and after three times, I just I got good, right? Yeah, I got good. I started, <laughs> yeah. stepped, I killed it, and I killed it with potions to spare as well. Like I fully went like full Super Saiyan on this boss. I was like, I am gonna beat you. And I'm gonna do it fucking flawlessly. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it felt good, but it like especially after seeing other people's classes and their play style, like while leveling, I'm like, Jesus Christ, I had it hard. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean that that could be on me. Like that could have just been the build I chose, I guess. But mm. uh, I'm I don't know. I'm stubborn like that. I like I liked my build. It did what I wanted it to do. Yeah, uh, yeah, but now I've hit end game. Um, I'm a. I don't want to say it's easy, but my build is my build is done. I'm just waiting to get the right legendaries to for it to get better. Now, yeah, uh, yeah. and my build is I am a barbarian who's really angry, and I spin in a circle and shout a lot. <laughs> just your classic <laughs> sort of barbarian setup, really. Yeah, yeah. Barbarian <laughs> slash warrior slash yeah. Just... Yeah, but I I tried to do that leveling and I succeeded, but it it was it was so rough, like yeah. literally. I think I had to hit level thirty five, and then that's when you unlock like, uh, in your skill tree you get like these passives where you can only pick one, you can only pick one of these four passives, but they're all powerful and like yeah yeah build changing. Yeah. And once I got that, everything kind of started coming together and it started getting easier. Yeah. But until that point, I was I, I was just having... Like, it was a good kind of issue because I never got hard stuck. There was that one boss that killed me four times, three times, four times, whatever. Mm-hmm. But outside of that, I was never like, I literally can't do content. Or, yeah. like, I'm just going to have to go somewhere else and level up or anything like that. Um, well, so I've, I've never, I've never I, looked at these like these games being designed, but I assume they probably start with by designing a full build or a full character, right, and then work backwards from that. Well, based on the legendaries, I assume they have to have an idea of how they want the end builds to go. Well, exactly. So what I'm saying is, like, sometimes the intro or the early stuff can be a bit rough, but then when you start getting a lot further in, you yeah. start, you get like, oh, okay. I see where you're actually kind of going with yeah. this now. Like, yeah, it's, it's like it's, 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 mean, okay, it's, it's the MMO thing where you're like, how do these? What's the point of this skill? How what's, how does this? And then you get a full rotation at max level. And you're yeah. like, oh, okay, it, make, it actually makes more sense now. So I said it to Swagger like half an hour ago or something. Like, I actually think some the early level. If you choose to do the dungeons with the bosses early level, I actually think that's some of the hardest content. Just because you're doing it with very little skills, yeah. like you still don't have a build yet. Yeah, you have Some no those, legendaries yeah. to amplify your skills, so you're you're literally just man moding every boss <laughs> yeah. you come against. It's just you and one ability going against <laughs> all then, these really hard mobs. But then I think it's funny because um, in in some ways the opposite can also be true because it's all scaled. If you've been like unlucky with legendaries or just even good gear drops or your build is a bit naff or something as you get down the tree like stuff is scaling up and if you don't keep up with it it, you can make life harder for yourself like later on 
Like yeah. I, I was playing because uh, I was playing Necro, and I because I love minions and uh, the, banana. Yeah, minions. The yeah, the, the, <laughs> the little yellow tic tacs. Popular yeah. property. Yeah. Um, no, but I love like minion classes, and all the way through the campaign, I was doing fine. And then at some point, I got to sort of mid end game, and the skeletons were just naff. They were just dying over and over. And I was the whole. It felt like plate spinning, where I would be like summoning more. And they're like, I'd summon a guy, he'd run in and die instantly. And I'm like, like the gif of Gromit pace, placing the, the train tracks in front of him as the train goes. And that's my. That was my whole strat to kill bosses. Was like just spam skeletons to distract him while I just slowly chip away with poison and. Um, and it was like, I was like, I felt super powerful for about 40 levels of this game. And then in the last 10, it's, it's, it's a bit gone to shit. So it's, uh, yeah, let the actual game begin. Is, um, yeah, it's just, it's funny how it's, because it's scaled, it does feel like you go through, which has always kind of been Diablo's thing, but I felt it more here where there was like insane power spikes and then slow, like fall offs into like oh this is difficult again holy shit and now and then you get a key legendary and you're like never mind i'm fucking balling out again yeah. <laughs> well, that's, which is I, pretty fun it's pretty fun i suppose that's that kind of feedback loop has to exist right because that's what makes these games so enthralling is being yeah. weak for a bit and then getting that massive power trip when you suddenly you get yeah. something you're like oh yeah. my god i'm just wiping screens again this is amazing <laughs> It's yeah, just like yeah. it's like like a roller coaster. Right? It's like up down up down up down up down. Because if it was just linear, it'd be really boring. Yeah. No one wanna. Yeah, you don't wanna gradually just have the same experience. Even if you're like still working hard to clear the screen, you don't want that the entire game. You want those those peaks and it's valleys. Like a, yeah, it's like a really fine balance where if stuff's too hard, people are gonna stop. But if you're just blowing up the screen from level one everyone's going to get bored and just quit because it's too easy. Yeah. It's, I feel like it, for the most part, it rides a really good line of being weak and then powerful and back again. Yeah. I mean, it's no surprise now that this game is done unbelievably well. And it's, you know, it's a very, yeah, very good it's... game. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Um, there were like a few new stories tied to this, but the key ones that I just remember off my head, um, they haven't released any numbers or anything like that, but this is already supposedly Blizzard's like, fastest and best selling game ever yeah <laughs> just ever yeah. This, this game's fantastic it just yeah. i mean yeah to, to it, the it, point it, of i finished all side content pretty much yeah i yeah. i can only do end game content jesus games only came out today sam <laughs> yeah yeah well <laughs> yeah it seems like a it's, um, rare blizzard w that you don't get very often that's right days. it reminds me of like old blizzard Almost, I know. I know. Like, it's like we can't go back, right? Yeah. Blizzard's had so many <laughs> shitty moments in the last like five, ten years, whatever. But this did remind me. It's like one of those things where um, you can kind of play other ARPGs in the meantime and sort of trick yourself into being like, "Oh, this is it's totally Diablo. Like, it's just yeah. Like, come on, it's not. It, it's top down. You just bash things with buttons. It's not that hard. Mm -hmm. Like, they can't have cracked. And then you play this, and you're like, oh no, there's you yeah. can't get back. You can't yeah, go back to not Diablo. There's something in the sauce Diablo. they've got. There is it. some kind of fucking secret spice they've put into this. That what was that fucking? Replicate. What was that fucking Minecraft one? Um, oh, uh, Minecraft Dungeons. Dungeons. Minecraft Dungeons. Maybe yeah. Minecraft Dungeons wasn't as good as I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought it scratched it's, the I, itch, but no. Yeah. So I think it's like we've all talked about like our builds and classes and stuff, but I think it's worth mentioning just how much fun the combat is in this game. It's yeah. Yeah. so satisfying <laughs> to just press buttons and watch, watch imps explode. It's so good. It's like everyone talking such high praises of this game. And then you know, like you talk about Minecraft dungeons, but there's the odd, you know, like game like this that comes out and does somewhat well. It does kind of feel like just blizzard coming back with Diablo four. And just being like, yeah, thanks for keeping my seat warm. I'll I'll take it yes, from here. It does. Yeah, it does, <laughs> I'm back yeah. now. It's fine. I'm just gonna I'm gonna sit here with my games as a service model and the upcoming expansions and just like chill from now on. But thank you for yeah. keeping everyone interested. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I think yeah. I saw a news story that they've already like basically announced they're working on two expansions have, for this yeah, game. Yeah, two expansions already planned. Um, whether that will be paid expansions or just like it uh, yeah there's a lot more paid. this is so clear this is i guess kind of it's like uh 
it's like an after credit scene, right? But they might as well at the end of this game turn to the camera and go, "See you in season two, <laughs> yeah, yeah. season one, yeah. whatever it starts yeah. like." Yeah, it literally ends like, you know, literally L- like that. L- you know how like L- the Marvel movies end, and it's like Spider Man will return. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, they, literally, they yeah. may as well have just done that. Lilith like... dies, and then Diablo kicks the door in and says, "Yeah, I'm thinking I'm back," <laughs> and it just cuts <laughs> the credits. <laughs> <laughs> how I'm gonna um yeah how is the I'm gonna ask how's the cash shop how's the cosmetics because this is a very uh expensive game if you early accessed in and there's still a lot of um, other stuff on top how is it is it bad is you know it's okay it's only cosmetic oh right? no nothing ever good right. started with that but it's I do find the prices of the cosmetics in this game pretty absurd it's about 20 20 pounds over yeah. 20 pounds for a single cosmetic armor set for a single class well, well i think um for that that is like the, the the fancy armor i think there are some slightly cheaper but they are still too expensive that's insane that's I, that's at it. least man i can't believe i'm about to say this but at least it's like a full armor set you know no, as Sam, opposed to Diablo, what? You don't even see your character. It's so tiny. You do. <laughs> I, this is the first game in ages I've transmogged because I look at my character so much. I want to look cool. I don't yeah. do that. I don't care what I look like. Yeah, this game has do. made me do it. You now care it's, about aesthetics. Well, it. I mean, it's like it's the same. Like we said before, this game is gorgeous, and the armor design in this game is so fucking cool. Yeah, everyone um, posting their drip. Is really cool. I really like that part of this yeah. game. It reminds me of um, when Hogwarts Legacy came out and everyone was posting mm. their wizard. And I think yeah. I think game companies are starting to really understand that people really like dripping out their characters. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I think I, I've said for like a while, like game companies do not understand the lengths people will go to for shiny shit. Like, yeah. If it if it if it makes you look pretty. People will go for it. The, the, why do you think The Sims has done so well? Like, or, or it's, it's like we've always had like cool customization and things like that. But when I say they're starting to understand it, I mean in a way that they're starting to put in, like games like Diablo, for example. You can zoom in, you can look at your character from all different angles and close up angles just to mm-hmm. see your drip. Every game these days that's coming out has like photo modes and things like that to yeah. read to, and allow like yeah. your characters to pose and do different um, filters and things. And I think they must realize that people like this stuff and that ties back into cosmetics. Because, and that's why they yeah. can charge so much for it. I, I just think it's funny. It does seem kind of redundant. Like, I'm, you know, I'm not a finance guy. I, it, whenever you say like, <laughs> that's so expensive, there's people always go like, they have teams of people on this, you know, and stuff like that. But um, it does seem really silly to charge like a third of the base game's price for a single set of armor in a game where I am every 10 minutes, I stop and find another bit of yeah. armor and be like, that looks sick. I can't wait to put that on my character. Like, it's it's, just, it, it feels it's, really stupid. Well, so it's it? also, it's for different people as well. For certain, you know, for most of the people you know, a 20 quid skin is a lot of money. Comparatively, you know, you've, played, you've paid for the game and now you got, they're asking for yeah. 20 quid more. But for other people, that's, you know, it's not a lot of money. They're like, fine, yeah, I, I want that almost straight away. Like, who cares? It's the same mm-hmm. type of, you know, people that are wailing in Star Rail and stuff where it's like, oh, sick new character, just inject 300 pounds mm-hmm. into the game to get this thing. Well, that's, it's, it's the same thing we had with Valorant, right? Where, yeah. We can. I think it's it's like a weird stance to be both like, I get these games like they have to support themselves somehow. If this is going to be like a live service going forward, obviously they have to make money somehow. And I don't mind because it's all cosmetic. But at the same time, I can also be like, but twenty pounds? Come on, for <laughs> what of a second? It's, on, it's really? also it's also in a game like this where it's like what if. They gotta charge money to keep the game going. It's like they do have money to keep the game. I just paid seventy quid for it. How's that? That <laughs> yeah. keeps it going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say Diablo had not the original Di- Diablo three had not that much like monetization. Well, the, right? the, the market's changed, right? People. Yeah. I'm not saying it's like uh, accepted, but it's been it's it's definitely become normalized. These 
Yeah. You know, we still call them yeah. microtransactions, even though at this point it's like fucking 20 quid per transaction. There's nothing really micro about that anymore. Microtransactions. But yeah, mac- <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, yeah, it's I, the, the argument of like, oh, it's not essential, but at the same time, it's like, I don't know, you go back 10 years in time and that cool 20 pound skin you're looking at is in the game, unlockable. I don't know, it's just... Yeah, yeah. But also, it was... Back then, it looked like four polygons. <laughs> and it took yeah. some guy's lunch break to make it, you know? Well, yeah, it's also, like, back in the day as well, we had MMOs, which were, like, buy to keep, right? You yeah. bought it, and then there was no subscription. And it's like... That won't happen again, surely. Yeah. Until uh, unless there's another market change in the future, which there will be, but I I don't think we'd ever go back to that. Yeah, I remember right? Guild Wars yeah. two. I think it was Guild Wars two came out, and it was like, yeah, no sub, just buy the MMO, and you can play forever. And it was kind of like, mm-hmm. what? Like, yeah, no one yeah. does that. That's crazy. Well, so yeah. it's gone. I say, it's fun looking back at the the like the the treasure trail of how we got to like twenty pound skins in cash shops. It was like we had here, which then went back to. Overwatch 2 kind of like having really expensive like cosmetic skins in that store which probably because of Valorant having really cosmetic skins and then like CSGO so I'm just going to blame CSGO for I think, the price of skins I think no, it's horse armor it's always back to Oblivion's horse armor My, oh, yeah. okay, it's, Tyre, it's Todd Fuck. There's, there's, there's two key points I always personally think of and it's like microtransactions started with horse armor which mm-hmm. was what it was like 3 99 or some shit for Oblivion golden horse armor and then the other one after that, I remember, is uh, Fortnite charging yeah. the equivalent of 20 quid skins. Um, and oh, being yeah. like, 20 quid? Who the fuck's going to pay 20 quid for this skin? You're insane, Fortnite. And you drop into a match and everyone's got it. And it's like, oh, okay, we're, all just, <laughs> we're just fucked now, basically. <laughs> the one, uh, No, the one that got me was Valorant with that dragon bundle that was like what 98 quid yeah. or something and i was I like will always he's... remember that dragon bundle, <laughs> he's gonna man. spend 98 quid on these dildo looking guns and then you get in a game and everyone on yeah. the enemy team has them, and you're like we're screwed <laughs> the first, we first, last, first match like it orped by a dragon it's like oh I just <laughs> yeah. hate this game <laughs> the, the sad part is is that since then diablo have released so many much more cooler skins and it's not diablo uh valorant have released so many more cool skins it's like you paid 90 quid for those skins that look like trash now when you got like uh, Philly, here's like, the thing, though. they can release as many skins as they want if yeah. I could get any skin for free, I'm taking that, like, Oni skin that, like, when you kill people, <laughs> like, shackles them. Mm-hmm. Like, they they have released some of the sickest animations I've ever yeah. seen. Yeah. I think, I think I'm going to I'm gonna try and put it back on topic. I think, because now we're just talking about fucking Valorant skins for half an hour. Um, <laughs> the, the, the reason it comes down to, because like you're saying, it's like, people pay for the dragon, but that's old now, and there's cool ones. But a lot of it is... Is paying to it's like trends, right? You want to be on top of the newest trend, as opposed to yeah. yeah. In, it's not not as opposed to in addition to having something that looks cool. It's also it's the new hot shit. This is just like the fashion it's industry. Fashion. Yeah, it's just it's the fashion industry, like <laughs> just for video games, basically. But it looks so good, man. <laughs> the armor in this game looks so good. I think it'll always just be a balance between if I ever feel like, as long as I am happily pootling along in my little free to play, you know mini (laughs) as long as i'm completely oblivious to the effect of a cash shop on my game i'll be i guess i'll be fine with it you know as long as there's enough in diablo 4 season 8 as long as there's enough cool shit for me to go and find i guess i won't mind but it's like Mm. the minute i'm like man is all the cool all the cool shit i have to buy and then that that's when you're like oh i'm out i I think i think what'll be interesting is with the launch this game being the not the the new full price right which is what like 60 70 quid that's the the new mm-hmm. normal triple a price now that i'm coming mm-hmm. to terms with you've got that on top of cash shops and battle passes and this that and the other it'll be interesting to see how much of the future content will be free if any of it like they might just yeah. still charge for it you, you, I, I don't think that's been confirmed yet or anything um i think that would be kind of egregious Depending on the size yes. of the content, I think to ask, just to keep asking for so much money, yeah, um, 
especially when I, they're going to run a season pass as well alongside this. Yeah, yeah, if I had to guess, I think they'll angle for like you know, like mini seasons that you can pay for or not pay for, but sort of play the content. And then I think there'll be like big tentpole, you know, uh, here's a new class and a new act or something releases. And yeah. that'll be like, you might have to pay for those, I imagine, at some point. Yeah. It just like, like, you, you have like to pay the Crusader. For Although, yeah. now that I'm thinking about it, you had to pay for Diablo expansions, but I guess. But they didn't have they all the didn't other. Have a mic- cash shop. They didn't have all the other monetary pipelines running alongside yeah. it. Uh, do you uh, yeah. Do you remember the Real Money Auction House? I was about to bring it up. Times, I yeah. do, mate. I do. So that was when I made a PayPal account, was for that. <laughs> You're like, this could be my break. <laughs> People had, uh, like, careers. In that cash shop, people were like making full time job money in that cash shop. I think my mate sold an item for like two hundred dollars or something. It's crazy, yeah. For, <laughs> for anyone listening that doesn't know or doesn't remember, uh, Diablo three uh, introduced that's one of its big features. A famously, in, it, yeah, famously introduced a in game shop or like marketplace where players could sell gear that they found in the game for real money to other players, uh, and I assume. Blizzard made some sort of, you know, middleman yeah. fee or whatever. Yeah. Um, and some and it sounds cool on paper, but some people were making like a, a lot of money <laughs> on this like weird system. I can't remember why they shut it down in the end. It did get shut down, didn't it? They just I, like yeah, it was gross. It was just it, pointless. Yeah. I was gonna say, I think it encouraged a lot of botting because yeah. the bots were farming for stuff, and then also people were like, "Well, what's the point of playing the game when you just buy your full best in slot legendaries?" Yeah. On the yeah. Market? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The drop rates were horrific to incentivize you checking out the auction house, but then it's like once you start buying the best gear, it's like, what is the? What am I even playing this for? Yeah. What's the point? <laughs> and that's I guess they they have to learn from that, right? Like the co- the shops in Diablo Four have to stay cosmetic because otherwise it throws yeah. all the balance. Oh yeah, them. I think I think Blizzard. That's what they've than... said, but that's what they said about Immortal. So it's like I get people not taking them at their word. Again, yeah. well, I said when, it, when they say no paying for power. Yeah, we were talking about it uh, like last week or the week before about how I think what will be interesting is not to focus on the launch of this game, but to see what it's doing two, three, yeah. four months from now. Because um, this isn't even the first season yet. This is like pre-season one. Oh, okay, like um, beta season and the zero actual thing. Yeah, the actual season pass. Because when you buy one of the additions or a couple of the additions it's like oh well the first season pass it's yours but it it's not in yet it's not in until like next month or something so it's we're in a sort of holding pattern at the moment just to see what it's like i see i soon yeah i soon do that just to catch any um if there's any like horrific balance or bugs, bugs or, or exploits or yeah yeah because yeah. yeah. um we'll get onto it soon but street fighter 6 has a similar thing where it's got uh, shops and battle passes set up, but nothing is up and running yet. Yeah, for yeah. whatever reason. Fancy skins. Well, the, <laughs> all, Street Fighter Five had an insane amount of skins by the end of it. So Street Fighter Six, I'm sure they'll just do the same thing again, probably. Mm. Um, yeah, Diablo Four. Anyone got any final things they want to check out before we move on? I I will say it has been. It's been both nice and also like, oh, how many like hot fixes and balance patches they've done because it's like oh it's like uh whirlwind barbarian clearly was very much top of like <laughs> the, the 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 pecking order and they keep nerfing it and i'm like oh it's it's nice to see that they're nerfing it but i'm like <laughs> you know it, it does feel it's like you know um when you play a game and it's like oh this is so overpowered why are they not why can't they just flick a switch and nerf it you know what i mean mm-hmm. they should they just take it out of the game and it's like well that's not how patches work and like by doing this one thing we might break something else and like we need to wait for more data to see how this plays out they're very much in this one like they issue hot fixes every like three hours that nerf and buff various classes yeah <laughs> so it's been kind of a wild ride where you're like oh i'm useless oh never mind i'm fucking yeah your again. dps um, just halves and then triples mid dungeon yeah <laughs> it's all just yeah. changing I, I'm it's kind of, getting... Yeah, it's kind of like the monkey paw curling where you're like, <laughs> damn, they are on it. But I'm I'm fully expecting it to be like, oh, I'm lightning. Oh, wait, they gate buff me. Now I'm fire. Oh, wait, no, no, frost. <laughs> yeah, I'm in real time. time yeah. yeah. It's like one of those things where I know Whirlwind Barbarian got nerfed, and that's what I play, and it's still perfectly fine for I, me I, at the moment. 
yeah. I've been looking at tier lists and uh, they updated today and well and Barbarian is still top of the <laughs> top of the l- lot of yeah, end it's, game. It's so. like it's one of those things where there's so many legendaries that enhance that gameplay mm-hmm. that you can't kill it because then you just nullify about half of the barbarian legendaries. Yeah. So I can't even I can't even imagine with how many knobs and dials players have to tweak their classes. I can't yeah. imagine sitting down with the balance team at Blizzard <laughs> being like, oh, right, what if we just took five percent uh you know, strength off Barbarian, what would that do? And it's like, well, here's all the knock-on effect, and it's like, good lord. <laughs> yeah, what, what would taking 5% off the Barbarian do? I don't know, let's just try it and find out. Flip a switch, it's active, <laughs> well, they, baby. <laughs> well, apparently there was a moment in the, in the pre, in the early access where they were like, damn, uh, Necromancer minions are strong, 10% less health, and then about an hour <laughs> later they were like, whoops, that was way too harsh, we're gonna buff them back up again. You ruined oh, my bad. run. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is, I don't know, it's kind of, it's kind of a. I like that. Story. I think it's really funny. You don't even use the minions now, do you, Will? Not anymore. Because that shit dropped them. Yeah. Oh really? That's so sad. <laughs> Wait I'm for just one a more bony patch. mage now. <laughs> oh, what's the fucking point? I saw when I saw jumping out of your stream, seeing you running around with like eight or ten skeletons. I'm like, hell yeah, that's what I want to play. <laughs> maybe that's cool. Well, maybe that's maybe that's uh, at some point I'll find a legendary that's like minions are. Insane again, and then I'll be back. That's that's it, exciting. Yeah, I'm yeah. looking for it. It is that loop though, where it's like you can do what you want while you're leveling, but when you get to end game, you do have to co- kind of conform to what's yeah. good. Mm. That's just every yeah, yeah. every yeah. MMO slash RPG ever, really. You can yeah. dick around yeah. for so long, but if you want to actually get to the end, that's, end, you have to start following. Exactly, meta. Yeah. I'm one of those people that's not a theory crafter, so at some point, I just I get a high enough level and I have enough paragon points, and I'm like, right, let's go look up yeah. a build, let's yeah. see what's good. I, I, I unashamedly have already looked up a whirl- whirlwind barbarian build because I made yeah, my own yeah. build, it was working, and I wanted to take that next step. So I was like, right, what are the legendaries I need to be looking at? What are actually the stats I need to be? Yeah. Or why spend Focusing all that time it. doing it yourself when some other guy's been labbing it for you since that's, the game came so out? Like... My one reply to that is is I am kind of the person that enjoys doing that theory crafting sometimes. Yeah. But I just wasn't uh just wasn't prepared to do that. There's a lot. It's, yeah. not, it's a lot of time. You yeah. get a lot of options. That's not even me. Like uh, for me, I'm like, do, I don't want to like have. I get choice paralysis where I'm like, uh, w- what do I do? So I'm just fully like finding leveling guides and being like, yeah. this is the best leveling spec. Okay, I'm going lightning sorcerer. Let's go this uh, this level, this point, this level, this point, this level. Pick up yeah. the the, and, the side quest to get my trait point or something or enhancement. Never but, let what? anyone tell you that there's anything wrong with that. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm still having a blast. It's like I don't like. I'm even skipping. The story in this game because I don't care. Just let me shoot things with lightning. Or <laughs> well, strategy guides <laughs> exist for a reason, and there are yeah, certain yeah. players that around. like to just read their way through a story. The most optimal, uh, through it for a game. Sorry, the most optimal I way. There's, guy, there's nothing wrong with that. I knew a guy who, before uh, we went to see the new Star Wars film, he looked up the script online and read all the way through it, so he knew. <laughs> What was going to happen, and he was so he was excited to watch it, which I, I thought was insane. But like you know, no, I take it back. Like that guy's a, vibes, that guy's, right? a, that guy's a maniac. That guy is wrong. Yeah. 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 Where is he now? Mm. In prison. <laughs> that was George Lucas. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna move us along then, but I assume you're all gonna be playing this for quite a while, right? It seems to have legs. I mean, yeah, that's what these games got, are. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's got legs. Season one next month at some point. Yeah, It'd be interesting to see. How it goes, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. All right, Steve, it's oh, time God. for our game. Yes. Steve and myself, we've been playing a lot of Street Fighter VI. Um, and it's a good one. This game is so good. I think this is... If I haven't been playing this game, I've basically just been watching it like on another monitor or just on the TV or something, just watching people oh. just... Bang matches out. 
or watching my replay so you can better counter me when we uh, spar. Well, that's well, that's the cool yeah. thing about this game is <laughs> the one thing I'll throw out about this this game is compared to the launch of uh, Street Fighter V when that came out, which was very bare bones. Um, yeah. That game came out and I think it had it had online ranked, it had a training mode, and it had the most basic arcade mode ever. And they said, "We are catering to the esports." audience hence why it's got nothing except for 1v1 <laughs> fighting that's what you like right and then no one fucking bought it except for esports people which is like 23 people um <laughs> <laughs> and there was that combined with like street fighter 5 had tons of problems on launch just the net code was fucked and uh, yeah just crashes and problems and everything um this game is the exact opposite to that in every mm. single way. There is so much to do in this game. It's kind of nuts. There's um, the three main sort of pillars of this game are there's a single player mode called World Tour. There's a whole battle hub, which is kind of like a almost like a virtual arcade slash like club scene. It's a bit weird, but I'll explain it in a bit. Or there's just your um, your fighting area where it's like here's training mode, here's trials, here's tutorials, here's ranked play, here's casual play. Um, yeah. And within all those sections, basically everything you could want out of a fighting game is kind of here. Whether, whether yeah. You, yeah. Um, I, I think even with this game, like the single player is so... It's not like a normal fighting game single player. Like, no, this is a whole game in and of itself. Yeah, so the single player it's... is like a weird Yakuza light mode. It's really bizarre, but it's really cool. Um, what were you going to say, Will? Uh, that's, that was my big question is like, is this, does this, does it justify itself? I guess <laughs> it's. Is because I've always felt like whenever fighting games try to do these, like Soul Calibur had like its weird RPG mode and stuff like that. And I always feel like if it's not Mortal Kombat's cutscene into fight, cutscene into fight sort of thing, they always feel a bit like, hey, there's some good ideas here, but maybe next time. And then they immediately drop it because nobody plays it. Now, this is, this is so, the closest good, thing. Yeah, this, this is, is the, a good one. It's like Mortal Kombat is, I think they call it like story mode. And it is, like yeah. you describe it, it, is Mortal Kombat is literally story mode. It is, they've basically made a movie and have injected fights <laughs> in between, yeah. like, scenes. Um, this is more of, like, an actual game. Um, the idea is that you can create your own character and there's, an, there's a really elaborate character creator. It goes insanely deep. Um, and you can, because it's the first game built on Capcom's RE engine... I assume it's got all the tricks and stuff of like, you know, like Monster Hunter create a character and all the bits like that. Like, I've obviously learned a lot and I've put that into this. Mm. Um, but yeah, you make your own character. You start off in Luke's dojo, who's the new like cover fighter. Uh, mm. And he's like, yeah, just, you know, you want to get stronger? That's fine. Go out there. And if I tell you how to get stronger, that's kind of boring. Find your own path. And you get missions that send you around. And you start as like a basic bitch. You have half a health bar. You have like two or three drive pips, which I'll explain in a bit. In a bit, um, mm -hmm. you do like no damage. You have no moves, and it's just like yeah, just go out there. And the story sends you to different main characters from the actual roster. So it sends you to like uh, go over Chun here and meet, one, yeah, right? Chun Li's yeah. the first one. It's like go see Chun Li, see what she's up to. You know, she's pretty strong. She might teach you how to get stronger. They, they knew what they were doing. They knew what they, they were doing. <laughs> <laughs> and you go there, and yeah, there's like cutscenes, and each character, like main roster character, might be having like a problem or like their own story attached. Um, so you just follow the linear story, and the idea is that as you do more fights, you level up. It's like an RPG, right? Your character starts at level one. You get experience. You level up. Um, you can choose what you want to make stronger, so you can get stronger kicks, punches, this, that, or the other. Um, and as you meet more, they're called masters. So like Chun Li is a master, Luke is a master. As you meet mm -hmm. more of them, you acquire their moves to bolt onto your custom character. 
and not only for like in fights you also get like a move to use in the world to help you like traverse and find secrets and stuff which is really cool yes yeah, well. so you can run around it's like a it's like a third person camera um you run around and yeah you you get chun li's spinning bird kick which <laughs> is so goofy turns you into kind of like a helicopter so you can you can, <laughs> you can get over short distances um mm. and you can basically fight any character in this like open world so you see little doris walking down the street like 80 year old woman but you'll approach her and above her head will say like she's level five or some shit <laughs> and you can just punch her mm-hmm. and start fighting her and get xp and it's all like it's it's kind of goofy but it's it is an actual proper story mode it's a proper single player you can actually get into and you know actually complete and learn more about these characters and from what i've heard it's quite substantial as well i think the IGN review said it was like twenty hours long, um, at oh, least. Wow. It's like, okay, yeah, and you meet all you meet all the characters on the roster. So I've, I haven't got that yet, but I've started seeing the memes of like people texting Jury and her being like, you know, just really angry but, and like. Uh, <laughs> actually, that that's one thing that I'm starting to dislike in games. Honkai has this, and also Street Fighter Six is. I don't like that every game is now like, oh, you're going to get missions and communications via text, and it's just like line. Wait a second line because they're doing you know they're feigning typing it's like can i not just have like a text box that i can just x <laughs> well you say you're sick of all games doing this it's literally honkai in street fighter those are the oh no i can see it becoming a trend now no i don't, I don't you know i um, imagine zelda the next zelda is gonna have you on your your slab or whatever <laughs> <laughs> receiving texts and zelda like you up you know <sighs> but yeah it's, it's the single players i haven't gotten crazy far into it yet but there's enough there that i'm like i want to go back and definitely see that through because it's cool just hanging out with the main roster in you, the world you also get cosmetics from it right you get cosmetics for your avatar but also for the main characters yeah you... as you find again the masters which are the main roster characters um you can level up their i think it's called their bond you can like give them gifts and stuff like it's a visual novel um and if you hit max which i think is level 100 you unlock that character's um alternate outfit which for most of the character is their og outfit from street fighter mm. so ryu now looks old and he's got a beard and that but you can unlock his original gi or cammy's got her new look but you can, say, you cammy's can, is yeah, the one everyone wants you can get her original leotard and things like that so it's quite grindy i think but i don't think you're supposed to get all of them <laughs> straight away you're supposed to obviously pick a yeah. character you like and and do that so do you think this is like um do you think people could buy Street Fighter Six full price and play? You think there's enough of this single player mode where it's like that feels like a good deal to someone who's not someone like me who's not really interested in one v oneing people online? I think there is because the idea behind the single player is it introduces a new control scheme called modern, which mm-hmm. if anyone that hasn't played Street Fighter, Street Fighter is a six button fighter. You have three punches, light, medium, heavy and three kicks, light, medium, heavy. And everything is done with those six buttons. But they've introduced something called a modern control scheme, which simplifies everything to four buttons and Mm -hmm. makes a lot of combos automatic, um, which really eases people in. And the idea with this as well is you can use this control scheme online in ranked and casual. This is what I've been using. Yes. Um, It plays a lot like Smash, so you've got like um, a heavy, light, medium button and a special button, and then your shoulder triggers are you've got um, your special parry, your special drive attack, um, an automatic combo button, (laughs) and a grab button. So the the trade-off is is that with this modern control scheme, um, again, a lot of the combos are automatic, but you do 20% less damage across the board compared to Ooh, classic um, even online in even on, yeah, even online even on rank this that's the trade-off user that people have already started saying about how a lot of this stuff might need tweaking um, it's like yeah that sounds a bit yeah um, i don't know about that because you have people saying like modern is the way to go like they've introduced it it's really good start using this other people are saying yeah, classic is better, and it's like it's been a few days, right? No one really knows the long-lasting oh, yeah, effects yeah, yet yeah. of what this is going to do. Um, but ultimately, if you play modern instead of classic, you don't have access to every single move 
which is where it might be better or worse for certain characters. Um, oh, right, yeah. But yeah. ultimately, the bit on, what I'm trying to say is that you can play a single player, get really good with this new control scheme, um, and then take it online and be pretty competent online. Again, if you play anything for 20 hours, you're going to be pretty decent by the time you come out. You're not going to be winning every single match, but you'd be able to hold your That's own true. in, in I guess... multiplayer. I guess is the worry then that it's like the the skill set doesn't carry over and you're always kind of bad compared to actual Street Fighter players. Well, that's <laughs> I the guess thi- would be the worry. Well, that's the thing is there's um you know modern controls, classic controls, whichever one you go for. Ultimately, the more you play these games, the more th- fundamental things you start learning and understanding. That, suppose, have, that yeah. have nothing to do with the controls at all. Yeah, um, yeah. Things such as like spacing, um, just character knowledge, just knowing what your opponent can do is sometimes half the fight. Um, a lot of early games, because I've been playing, I've basically been playing nonstop ranked in this. Um, and a lot of early games, it's just like, I'm against this person, I don't know what the fuck they can do. So I'm just going to do yeah. what I can do, but ultimately I don't know what they do. And then the more you play against that character, you start thinking, okay, I have to watch out for this and this, and I can react to that because I know they do this and this. And um, A lot of fighting games is just uh, repeating scenarios in your head <laughs> that you've seen before, so you know yeah. what correct decision to make. Um, and that's what, yeah, that's, that's basically what it is, but yeah, so you have that you have that whole single player component. You have like I mentioned the uh, battle hub, which is like an online, um, like a big arcade. Um, mm-hmm. You can you take your custom character in there. This is where because custom characters can be so broken, right? Because again, you can give them a shore, you can and then give them Zangief's like air grapple and shit like that, and they just become insanely strong. This is where you can do janky avatar fights and things like that without any ranking without any this that it's just for fun right oh that's cool yeah and you can buy um different cosmetics and things for your avatar to like dress them up certain ways and almost like you know just like people like we were saying people like showing off their characters right yeah Um, yeah yeah some people will make the coolest thing you've ever seen other people will make absolute grotesque monsters in this game because the character yeah, creator is so fucked up you can you can literally create like just gorillas or aliens or really weird looking things in this game yeah um, you can show them off there there are uh, cabinets in there where you can play retro fighting games as well again against other people so you can just play like street fight 2 um against other people <laughs> oh that's cool that's it's, neat. yeah it's tons of stuff like that um and then so that's I haven't done much of that, but there's there's that's one of the parts of this game that I want to dive into at some point and have a real like look around. Mm. Um, and yeah, the last bit is the fighting hub, which is where I mainly sit. Um, which is there's there's tutorials for the entire game in both classic and modern that teach you the entirety of every single system you could want to know about this game in both control schemes, um, which is really good. Uh, mm. There's trials for every single character, so there's like a trial. It's basically it, it chucks you into a, a training room against you know a training character that doesn't move, and it gives you a combo and says just do the combo, and they start really easy. Oh, I like those and get yeah. harder, 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 harder. Um, every character has about fifteen of those, going from easy to hard. Um, they're really fun, and they're a great way to dip your toes into a new character as well. Um. And there's also, yeah, ranked mode, which is what I've been playing, which is, you know, just fight other players, uh, do 10 placement matches, get a rank, win matches, go up, lose matches, go down. And that's where I get my fun from these games, really. Um, Mm. I think one thing that stands out about this game that's been absolutely fantastic, which I really like, is if you do just want to sit down and just play Street Fighter and just grind it out. You can get in and out of matches so quick. It's yeah, it's, it's yeah, so yeah. good. Um, it's always been an issue with. Um, it's gotten better with every single game, like from four to five to six. And this game is almost it's almost instant. Um, yeah, you queue up, and then it says another fight is coming your way. Whatever, you instantly go to you load for two seconds. 
you go to a screen of the two characters looking at each other as it loads something, I don't know. Uh, two more seconds, make a few funny faces by moving the joystick, which is quite cool. Um, and then the game starts. And you're, you're, just in, you're just in the match. Round one, go. And it's, it's so quick. And then after the set is over, someone's won. If you both... Because there's like you know like a victory screen where you know your Ryu is like yeah. walking cool or whatever, um, yeah, yeah, and that lasts like you know like five ten seconds. If both player is just mashing X to skip cutscenes, you can start a next the next set almost immediately, and it's perfect. It's it's so good. And it's just it's like the it's like the when Meat Boy was like, what if there was no loading between your yes, failed yeah. platforming <laughs> run? <laughs> yeah. There's no time to get mad because you're just going again. Yeah, I just I just love it because. Uh, ranked. I'm not sure about casual mode, but ranked mode um, defaults to best two out of three. You need both players yeah. to accept it, but by default, it always offers the best two out of three. So if you lose the first set, almost like straight away you're like, "Fuck it!" Like, like go, go, go. You mass an X. Like, I'm not done. Like, I want, I, I want, the, yeah. I want the run back. I want to beat this guy. <laughs> um, and you can just, yeah, you can get in that really quickly. And I just, I love that. Um, I'm trying to think what else to say. Really, the net code is I, spotless, which is amazing. No, I haven't had any oh, lag good. online. Um, they finally it's like the one thing you really need, isn't it? <laughs> which it's... I feel like five <laughs> is the thing that it messed up, right? Well, it's like if it's really weird because if the net code works perfectly, which this game does, you never yeah. notice it. You never think about it. It's not even part of anything. Your thought process. You just play the game, right? Yeah. But if it's bad in any way, it ruins the entire experience. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally, um, totally. And that was one of the things that killed, at least for me, Street Fighter Five on launch is that yeah, just lag. It, and it's a fighting game, right? Like a lot of combos and things are you're basing things on individual frames. Um, so you need things to be silky smooth, and yeah. th this game is. I've played uh, one or two of my matches. Um, the opponent's name has just been Japanese. Uh, absolutely fine. I, you know, it's just I've I've fought some people from America. Again, it's just absolutely fine. It's it's great. It's just perfect. Is this, is this the rollback? Rollback? Yeah, this is right, roll, that, yeah, yeah. It, it's rollback netcode. They had the rollback. Magic. They had rollback netcode in the fifth game, um, and on launch, it just didn't really work. And oh, okay. they, they spent they spent a lot of time improving it and fixing it. And now it's, they've obviously sussed it now because yeah, it, it just yeah. it works now um play a lot of games with steve which has been really fun yes um, how's that going what's the what's the record looking like so far i've i've taken one match from josh. I've, I've seen <laughs> steve beat josh and that's all i need one match or one round he's, no, take, one he's, he's, he's taken he's taken a match yes one full match. match oh yeah right, okay you slept in josh uh, no, it's like you know. After a hundred matches, you're gonna statistically lose one, probably. So. Okay. Yeah. Well. Okay. <laughs> no, it's 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 been tons of fun. I've got to say, Steve, your attitude towards this game has been nothing but amazing. I was gonna say with uh, with because like in other ranked games like League of Legends or whatnot, I or Overwatch or anything like that, I'm often like I don't want to do ranked. I get ranked anxiety because I'm always in League of Legends. There's a thing called ELO Hell where. If you'll get low enough in the ranking, you're with other you're with players who generally don't know what they're doing, so it's very hard to climb out of it because you've got people who are like, I'm gonna you know, like ruin your matches. Um, but in one v one games, I'm like, that's perfect for me. I have no problem like doing like ranked or progressing or climbing in one v one games. And um usually it's like card games I've leaned towards, but they often are like you need a lot of time investment or a lot of money. Um, but fighting games, it's like, no, it's just literally, it's my skill. And if you fight someone and you lose, you're like, oh, I'm, I'm, my mindset is like, oh, I want to do best, like get them next time. Like, oh, they they kept me in the corner with this move. Let me not have that happen this time. Let me work out how to avoid it. It's like, really, I enjoy it a lot. And it's, it's as long as I'm learning from stuff, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's I'm, I'm, I'm excited to progress and stuff. So, yeah, yeah I think really good well it's like end of the day you know the opponent might be a different character right but they're not doing anything that you couldn't do yourself they're not there's no buffs or debuffs or uh pay to win anything it's just this person is just their character and they want to be yeah. your character and there's, there's something really 
I, I don't know. It's something really pure about that. I always find it's just you versus another guy. And you're both just trying to kill each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I've I've been playing a lot of a character called Manon. Um, she's it's the ballerina the, woman, right? Yeah, ballerina slash fashionista idol. Yeah, well, she, oh, she's yeah. So troll. It's great. She's. I, I'm getting a little bit not like bored of her, but I think I'm ready to move on and start trying different characters now. I've I've moved on to Ryu. Nah, Jury, I don't have a lot of interest in. Character, the, I'm going to play the character that's been in every single Street Fighter that has been. Well, that's the thing. It's, it's, Ryu is always a great character to learn these games with because he's not boring, but his moveset is all, basically the same every single game. And you, yeah. you know, to yeah. anti air with Shoryukens, control horizontal space with Hadoukens. And then you can just, again, a lot of these games is learning what other characters can do right so you can really learn a lot just by messing around with ryu and also get a lot of wins just because it's ryu you know what to do it's a very simple game plan he hasn't got crazy combos like kimberly where she does mix-ups and blah 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 blah. it's just nope sure you can if they jump at you how do can when they're away from you <laughs> it's just simple it's just, it's just simple um but yeah this game this game is amazing this game's fantastic um the only, the only sort of downside I will say is I'm playing on PC. Um, I have had a few technical issues, which is a bit of a shame. Um, I think that's just my PC getting on a bit. But you said yours has been fine, Steve. Mine's been fine mostly, yeah. Um, it's it's uh, like I think there was like what there was one time where the online services were a bit funny, but I think that was just like yeah. launch day woes. Uh, but yeah, other than that, it's been perfectly fine for me. Yeah, I had to. I had a few um, stutters that were really annoying, so I verified the game, and it wouldn't boot. So I was like, "Oh no!" So I re-downloaded it, and then it booted. So that fixed that. But the kind of the little micro stutters I were getting persisted. But we, I didn't get any. Now that I think about it, we played a little before we started recording today. Um, I didn't get any whilst we were playing. So I, hmm. I, I don't know what's going on really and i was saying the other day um i go on like forums or subreddits looking for people with this problem and a lot of it is just people just happy <laughs> with the game yeah 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 so, yeah so i'm like oh that's cool but like what about my little problem i'm having and now like i say it's coming and going and i don't know it's not bad enough for to stop me playing um it's just kind of annoying um but it's like the tiniest blip. It's like oh. just putting a little bit of a damper on your... Kind of, yeah. I your just... Street Fighter party. Your Street Fight. Your street yeah. party? My, my party? My Street Party. My Street Party, yeah. <laughs> street Party. So, yeah, well, something like that. But yeah, Street Fighter 6 is fucking awesome. If you're going to ever get into fighting games, this is it. This, this, <laughs> like, there's no more excuses. If you don't, if you're like, oh, I want to play fighting games, maybe, and you don't buy this, then don't bother. Don't come back. You oh. missed your chances. This is it. This is it now. One thing that well, might I mean, help... you could wait till Street Fighter Seven. <laughs> like, well, yeah, in, in like eight uh, years. One yeah, thing that you might help convince people is that tweet that you said about like how this is like the best like numbers wise fighting game. Oh yeah, they right? said, so they've said how um, was it Steam charts? So the on on Steam only. Don't know about like consoles and stuff, but on Steam the. Most played fighting game before this was uh, Mortal Kombat 11, which was on something like 35,000 consecutive players, which is yeah. insane. I know like PUBG or whatever has like millions, but like it's fighting games, right? It's never enormous. Um, Street Fighter 6 on sort of launch, around launch, was on I think about 65, 70,000 consecutive players. So it's doubled the original high. Um, mm. which is insanely good for fighting games. I don't know what's on now. It might be high, it might be low, I'm not sure. Um, but it's insanely good. They've also said how um, they've already broken uh, a million sales across all platforms, which again, for a fighting game, um, is really, really good. This game's cross-platform as well. So it is. Oh, okay, okay. That's cool. Yeah, yeah even if like, um, oh, a million players, but they're all on PlayStation, like, doesn't care. You can, you can play with them. It's fine. And I think it's like, we also have to remember that this is... This isn't this isn't a game that's like oh it's doing well because it's the only game out like no this came out on like Diablo also came out that day 
Tears of the Kingdom has just come out, so like it's doing like well in the middle of like yes the yeah. the the peak season of gaming, so it is actually mm. one to keep an eye well, on. Well, this is the first fighting game I think for a while, which is broken it's... into mainstream. It doesn't happen very often. Like a fighting game yeah. comes out and yeah, and like definitely. random people are talking about it. It's like no, this has had lots of trailers, lots of lead up, tons of really good press, amazing reviews. Um. Number one top sellers on Steam, things like that. Like people were really excited for this, and it just shows how all, how all the single player stuff has really helped in that regard. I just, uh, it's fun. The good thing about I just the, can't justify it. I just can't. I really want to, but I just can't justify. <laughs> the, the cool it. I know I'll spend sixty quid on it and then do two rounds and be like, yeah, no, it's still not for me. Well, the, the best thing about it is uh, for anyone that does get tempted and and jumps in. Um, because the player base is so high, there's never been a bigger influx of literally new people to the genre. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you can... Uh, a lot of people have been saying, um, oh, I keep getting dunked online, it's not very fun, and that's because people are playing casual mode. Which yes, is no I did that. Yeah, that's, <laughs> and that's, that makes sense, right? Because you want to play casually, that's where you go. The, the thing you need to actually do is you need to just jump into ranked mode. Um, get the placements out of the way, do ranked mode, and if you're really bad at the game because you're new, that's absolutely fine. You'll be against a ton of other people of equal yeah. skill level, and that's what you want. This is what I was saying earlier, like with ranked mode. Like if you, if you, you, you know, just ignore casual completely. Just jump into rank in any honestly like single player ranked game. Yeah. Because if you if you go down like in rank. It's your it's your own power that's going to climb you up. It's not like oh, a te- you need to pray for the right team and stuff. Like no, you're against other people who are also down low. Yeah, like there's no, it's not like in like um a shooting game where it's like skill based matchmaking and you're you're praying that like no one's no one's like tanking their rank, are they? Like it's like <laughs> no, if you're in bronze, you're actually fighting other bronze players. Well, it's like it's almost like a weird respect. Th- there's like a weird almost like respect thing with Street Fighter where people that are really, really good at these games they don't want to beat up people that don't know how to play. Because they're, yeah, they're, yeah. they're, it's not like a shooting game where you kill multiple bad people really quickly and you get this endorphin rush from like getting multiple kills over and over again. If you, if you play a fighting game and you just stomp someone that obviously doesn't know how to play, it's, there's no fun there at all. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I, you don't I've never really heard about Smurfs in fighting games. I have no doubt they probably do exist in some fashion, but, I, but it's never really spoken about. It must be really hard, right, to be... To like, be bad? Pretend like, yeah. to be bad at a fighting game and the, then be bad for a while and then just be good? I don't know, yeah. I was going to say, the only thing I can think of is like if a content creator is like, I'm doing a bronze to platinum series or something, oh, you yeah. know. But well, that that's such a niche Or Well, this game, this game has a... A crazy like win streak multiplier, where yeah. um, I was because I was playing man on. I went on a crazy win streak of like eighteen wins or something in ranked, and I went from bronze to gold in about an hour. Yeah, because it's just because the game is like okay, you're clearly not supposed to be here, so we're just gonna gonna we're gonna get you out of here as soon as yeah. possible to try and make it more even. Because again, like. The person that's just dunking people don't know how to play isn't having fun, and the people that are getting dunked on by people that are obviously way better than them aren't having fun either. Yeah. So it's it's within the game's incentive to it's, just get you out of the ASAP. It's really funny you mentioned though the casual versus ranked sort of uh, what's the word the opposite effect because I've noticed that in the, like skill based matchmaking has been coming a lot or coming up a lot in shooters recently, and there's a lot of people that are like you know, oh, we need casual versus ranked. And yeah. it's like, when there's no skill-based matchmaking at all, casual does not feel like a casual mode for 90% <laughs> of the player yeah. population. And it's like, the casual mode is ranked, and the, the ranked is casual, and casual is anything but. And it's like, what a weird system. Well, it's, it's, it's like, in terms, of, the... in terms of this game, I'm... I... I'm surprised it even exists because you have the battle hub mode where you can run around and do avatar fights and you can yeah. sit down at cabinets and play normal mm-hmm. Street Fighter matches with other players. No MMR involved because, you know, you're, you're literally waiting for someone to come sit down and play with you. Whoever um, shows up, yeah. So, yeah. so 
again, I don't really know why casual mode even exists. If it's just there because even yeah, even though it's I... even though it's not needed, I feel like people would for whatever reason shout for it. Like, where's my casual mode? I don't want to play ranked. Where's casual? It's like, yeah, I, you, I... you think you want it, but you don't want it. <laughs> I was gonna say, I I think it's honestly it's a bit of a trap because, like as I said, it I is, was, yeah. like, my first online matches, I was like, okay, I'm gonna jump into casual first, and then it was like I got dunked, and I was like, oh shit. And then I realized, wait, no. If I do ranked, I'll probably be against like people of my skill level. Could it, could it just be the game has just launched? It's still finding where everybody kind of roughly sits. Maybe, yeah. yeah. Or like, like Josh, the... like Josh said, he went in and went on an eighteen win streak. Is that because the well, game is like, oh, you're not new? <laughs> well, the oh, first, God. when you queue up for ranked, I think your first three matches are against a bot, so it can roughly gauge how oh, good oh, really? you are. Oh, not for, yeah. not for me. I oh, for I, me it was when you when you first do, you, I clicked you, I clicked uh, I'm brand new to Street Fighter. Yeah, when so. when you do your first ever ranked match, a menu comes up with four options, and it says basically, what is your experience with Street Fighter? And there is, oh, okay. I, I have never played at all. I've never no, I think so. I've never played a fighting game before. There is, uh, I basically have played this like ten years ago. There's, I kind of know how to play, and then there's, I've played a lot of Street Fighter. I chose the second from highest, which is like I know a bit of. Street Fighter, and it chucked me straight into a, <laughs> against ten people in a row that knew what they were doing. Um, <laughs> and then, whereas for me, no, I I clicked. I had no clue. It put me against the bot for my first three matches, and then the next few matches, I won most of them against actual players. There were a few that I didn't, but like I, I did pretty well. Like so, I think it is actually pretty good at like guesstimating your well, the, skill the good thing it's done about that as well is when i finished my placements it put me into bronze um mm. which i then climbed i'm currently gold um the rank that you're in is called rookie which from yes. what i've looked up is a specific league for new people that choose that option of i have never played fighting games before ah uh, okay so i can't be paired up Say Steve and I both finished our placements. I can't fight him anyway. I will never meet him because he's in a specific league for new people, which is until I climb and until, up and then yeah, until you. until you promote and then mm. it's like the whole hunt showdown thing where you know your first ten hunters when they die they don't get killed or whatever, so you're like a little bit safer. Yeah, you're, you're in the kids pool. Yeah, you're in you're in the kiddie pool. Um, yeah. which, which again is one of the many systems in this game to make it as accommodating as possible for new people. So yeah, you got massive player pool, rookie leagues, modern controls, ranked play, cabinets, single play. It's just yeah, there's tons <laughs> of stuff here. It's just it's just oh. full on package. Sounds like a good time. It's a very fun time. All like I said, uh, between playing between playing this game, all I'm doing is like at watching it or thinking about it. So <laughs> I'm really tempted. Who's got the time though? We haven't. I haven't finished Zelda. Now I'm racing through Diablo. Hey. Oh, I raced Baldur's, through Baldur's Gate. Comes out next month. Jesus. Uh, I raced through Zelda. I hit credits on Tears of the Kingdom right before this came out. That's smart. And, uh, and or what's your rating for Zelda? No spoilers. No spoilers. Zelda. Um, really, really good game. Solid ending. Um, really fun climactic. Uh, latter half of the game that I really enjoyed. Mm. Um, every time I thought it was kind of wrapping up it would do something else which i think is always good um you know like um other games i think of when i think of that is like uh you know like red dead redemption 2 where it's yeah. like okay it's ending now and then something else happens it's like oh, okay okay now we're ending it's like oh no yeah another it, mission it's like surely <laughs> surely now at <laughs> <laughs> some point i'll go to bed exactly yeah. um yeah yeah finish tears of the kingdom um solid solid game uh, well, that's kind of it. Started playing RuneScape three. Um, Same. I'm excited for Necromancer. Yeah, there's a big because um, obviously Bluntcast in our friend circle is working on this. I'm now dabbling because the new skill coming out in the future looks really really cool. Um, nothing to say about this. I'm just you know I'm just playing RuneScape yeah, again. Same. It kind of just like nice to be like oh yeah that's that's my game that i put on while watching streams because like <laughs> yeah. diablo and street fighter i kind of need to pay a little bit of attention to whereas runescape is like nah just right click and then yeah. like hog in chat uh what else uh, one last little thing is uh honkai star rail update 1.1 1. 1 is literally tomorrow so i've been doing oh. 
uh, everything I can to get. I thought it was today. Uh, I th- so everything has ended today. The current, um, right. the current wishes for what's his name, the character that you've got. Um, Jing Yuan. Yeah, he's gone. He is now officially gone. Um, you can preload the update because it's like seven gig or whatever, so you can get it already. And I think midnight tonight, uh, it launches. Is that is that are they month long or are they? Half a month. Is it been a oh, month? I think since they're it about. Launched? Yeah, they're about like. Oh no, it's been longer than a month. Um, it's been. God, has it been two months since Star Rail came out? Uh, that's what I was thinking. It can't have been two months since. No, I'm Star pretty Rail sure launched, that the banners are only like. They're like three weeks. Yeah, they're like twenty-one days. Yeah, they're like three-week banners, and we've had two of them. So it's been out. April twenty-fifth is when Star Rail launched. So yeah, it's been about six weeks. Um, right. Since the game came out, so yeah, that's a, that's a quite a good time frame. I quite like that. Every six weeks, bigish new story uh, content. Yeah. I mean, I say bigish. I don't. I don't think anyone really knows yet how big this update is, right? Because it's like uncharted territory. It's their first, you know, point one update. So we'll see. It might take like an afternoon to finish everything, or a few days. <laughs> after just, yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, I've got a lot of currency ready for the next pool. See if it goes badly, I'm just going to stop playing. So <laughs> I'm skipping this one. I'm going for the next one because apparently he's a healer, and I need a second healer. I'm just I'm just being optimistic with this one and hoping that I'm uh, just going to get early. Who wails out for a healer? Ugh. Healers are really Hello. important in Star Rail, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, well, I'm sure we'll talk about this probably when it comes out, so we won't do too much on this now. Um, but yeah, we've talked a lot about Diablo and Street Fighter. Holy shit. Yes. Let's do some news. Um, really good games. They're bo- both fantastic games, really. Isn't, hasn't this been a great year for video games so far? Holy shit. It's, it's... Hey, uh, both, both good and bad. No, both... I hate... I've, I've, no, I've, ha- I've had, had this had conversation. Absolute bangers. Yeah, I've had this conversation on Discord at some point where like the bad ones stick out but this year so far has actually been insane for game release. Well, no, yeah, no, 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 yeah. I do think it's good, but the, the, there are bad bads and there's some good goods as yeah. well. Yeah, but here's it, the thing is we, we never get good goods. Yes. You know, we get like one no. or two. I feel like we have had absolute bangers this year already. We're only yeah. halfway through. It's, it's, it, it feels like this is the year we sort of, we like cracked video games, you know, and now <laughs> I'm back to being like unreservedly excited about a lot of things that are coming out where I'm like, Oh. Yeah, Street Fighter gonna be good. Diablo gonna be good. Yeah, Question Elder's Gate is... coming out next month gonna be good. I'm excited. Question this though, like, is Breath of the Wild taking Game of the Year or has something else like? For me, so far, it's still Breath of the uh, Breath of the Wild. Uh, Tears of the Kingdom. Tears of the Kingdom. Yes. Because as a, as much as I love Street Fighter Six and everything else that I've played so far, I I think the first reaction I had to playing the, the first few hours of Tears of the Kingdom just that sticks with me. Similar to Breath uh, of the Wild, I think. Diablo, Diablo could take it for me. Depends. We'll see how the how this play the rest of the game. Plays it comes out. down to what kind I mean, of like, had it player like, you are. Days. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see if Blizzard ruins it. Yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah. We'll see how Blizzard. Well, everyone's everyone's it, sleeping but... on uh, Final Fantasy 16, which comes out in like true. That's because well. it's not out yet. And no, no. But what I'm saying is like, oh, will it be Tears of the Kingdom or Diablo? It's like it could just easily be Final Fantasy as well. That's what I mean. Like in in you know last year we were like. Yeah, probably Elden Ring, right? That's the game of the year. This yeah. year, it's like, I don't know, like one of you know a handful yeah. of games this year. It'll be, be it'll, game of the year. It'll, you know, it's a crazy year when you can't even tell what four games will be in the running for game of the year because there because there because there, there, there are more than four. Everyone's already sweating their top ten list, and it's only June. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, the top ten list is obvious. It's all Spider Man two, so. Spider-Man 2, just play that 10 times. <laughs> just 10 yeah. times, yeah. Uh, news story for the week. This was the biggest one. Um, this was uh, the Bloomberg article about inside the making of Redfall. Um, this is a locked article. You can find other ways to read it, but I'll keep this one up here. Um, we'll go over the main points of it. It's basically, for anyone that remembers, there was an article a while back about Anthem. Um, and about how Anthem kind of came out was really bad, and everyone thinking, how do these, how does this actually happen? Yeah. And then someone comes out with an article saying, like, here, here is how it happens. Um, yeah. We've now got something similar for Redfall, which, as you probably remember from a few episodes ago, is Arcane's 
you know, they're blunder. Just put it as simply as that. Then it's not very good. Um, yeah, key parts of this article that it goes through um, talks about how during development of Redfall, seventy uh, percent of the original Prey <laughs> employees that worked on it just up and left. So they were yeah, having, crazy. they were just like bleeding talent out of every orifice, basically. Um, it started off as a game, you know, similar to their original single player experiences, but then just had a big demand to inject, you know, games as a service and microtransactions, yeah. which is what a lot of it is what people thought, but it's yeah. been clarified. I feel, I feel like it's, it's the big thing for me was like, this was very into development already when Xbox, when Microsoft bought yes uh, Arcane or bought Bethesda, including Arcane, and um, it it kind of the sort of narrative I was reading online was this idea that like oh Microsoft needs live service games, so they came in and you know forced Red Poor Arcane to yeah. make a live service game when actually this was already somewhere you know already mostly along. And a lot of people who were sick of making a multiplayer game were hoping that Xbox would see this and just can it because it yeah. clearly wasn't shaping up to be a very good game. There's, there's, the, qu- there's the quote. The quote from the article specifically is people that work on the game saying like, when Microsoft bought the company, they were hoping like, oh, for the love of God, please cancel this game I'm working on because it's so bad. <laughs> It's just, it's just so odd to hear you know developers actively praying for their own game to be cancelled because it's going yeah, in such yeah. a bad direction it's it's sad man it's it's really sad i think we also discussed it before which that was before we knew this and i think it ties in quite nicely it's we were saying how xbox is buying up all these developers and being really hands off and they're like yeah. You know, we're buying all these companies, but don't worry, we're letting them do their thing. And it's like, maybe you should be helping <laughs> a little bit. Maybe work out what you've just bought and, yeah. and try and help it along. Because if Redfall was in really far along in development, but, you know, obviously needed more time or a shake up or something, Microsoft could have, you know, looked more into the project and been like, you know what, actually, yeah, cancel Redfall because this is going to be not very good. Or you know what? We'll give you more time and money. Shake up what you're doing. Start again. Just anything. But yeah, they just let it carry on its <laughs> its crash landing that it was already heading for. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah it's 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 just it's just sad, really. Um, I- there was there was a good part as well I read, which was like. Um, that you know, it speaks to the like, how does this happen, sort of thing. Was it not obvious that this was a a bad game to the people making it? And the bit that uh, that I read that was uh, about how everybody working on this game obviously knew it was in a bad shape. Yes, but the the sort of company line was like, you know, that the 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 polish it's that is all gonna the last five percent when we put the little finishing touches on it, then it's all gonna come together, and you just gotta keep going and hope that that's and it's like that feels like such a slimy way to run a project where yeah. everybody hates it but they're like well oh, it might come together in the last five minutes you or you'll, you'll also have obviously developers working on it that have been in the industry for decades that'll be like this no that doesn't yeah that does happen sometimes but it's not you know it's wishful thinking it's you know yeah um i assume the people that thought that were the ones that probably left so <laughs> Because yeah, again, probably, like probably. just seventy yeah, yeah. percent of talent just up and out the door is is insane. Imagine you know you just go to work and this week someone else that you knew is just gone, or your email bounces because that person's left, or just this that and the other. It's it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. So yeah, I mean, I feel like this kind of puts a bow on Redfall as far as I'm personally like concerned or invested in, you know. It's like yeah. Redfall can maybe get like content updates in the future if they keep pushing it along as some sort of really bad live service thing, you know, like trying to push along a corpse. But like as yeah. far as I'm <laughs> as far as I'm personally concerned, the game's come out, it's not very good, and now I have an article 
describing in great detail about how this has happened. I'm like, yep, like shut the door. It's done. Like so, it's, it's all been it's all been sorted. <laughs> well, it's, it, and it's also like like we were saying, this is such a good year for video games. It's like who has the time to just sit and wait around for Redfall to eventually get good? Like exactly. who cares? Yeah, we've got so many good games to play right now. Yeah, it came out in. It was supposed to be. Even when we didn't even know it was going to be really bad, it was like, oh, Redfall will be cool for a week to check out before all the other cool stuff starts <laughs> yeah, coming out. And now yeah. it's just like, don't even bother. It just, yeah, it'll just yeah. sit in the halls of Game Pass in the back forever with like, yeah, uh, uh, with 150 players or something. Yeah. So I think, yeah, Microsoft definitely needs to work out what they're doing going forward because they can't. Like branding and reputation, they can't keep doing stuff like this. I don't think it's just damaging. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, Redfall, R.I.P. Um, we move on to this one. This one was quite interesting. Do you remember we talked about Yuji Naka, who is the creator of Sonic? And uh, oh yeah, <laughs> and the other cursed game, and the other what cursed game, ba- Balan. <laughs> That's such a good picture. <laughs> uh, if anyone isn't aware, yeah, Yuji Naka is the guy that created Sonic the Hedgehog and his most recent game, Balan Wonderworld, which came out and I think almost gave me a stroke when I played the demo because it was so fucking weird. Oh, it was, it was so bad. I felt sick playing yeah, it. Game, no, game, I don't get motion sick, but... That game was so bad. Yeah, he might be going to prison for like two years. Um, him... For Balan Wonderworld. Right? Yeah, because yeah, that game was so bad. They're locking him away. <laughs> I'm glad we're finally arresting bad video game developers. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's what we've been missing. Yeah. Um, him and a few other people were basically insider trading stocks. Um, it was information on... Oh, is it, is it, yeah. But remember that um, Battle Royale Final Fantasy VII game? Oh, yes. Um, the First Soldier. Yeah, there was based on that and another game called Dragon Quest Tact... Um, he, him and a few others knowing they were coming out by a smaller development studio uh, bought a bunch of stocks and then obviously you announce a new FF7 game and everyone flips their shit and you know that dev studio stock price goes up um, yeah he's, he might be it's not confirmed yet there's like a, another court casing but he might just be like getting locked up which is kind of a sad ending to the <laughs> To the creator of, I can't Sonic. Uh, honestly. Joking, I can't. <laughs> I can't think of a more appropriate ending for the creator of Sonic <laughs> to go to prison. It's like, oh, his legacy, all this Sonic pregnant art online, <laughs> and the, oh cre- the creator's just in prison. <laughs> it's almost That's poetic. Such a strange, what a strange story. Uh, the over a Final Fantasy mobile game of all things. To yeah, go to prison for. Oh, That's we, so sad. We said this, didn't we? Where it's like you should wait for the fucking release of a massive game or something. Maybe, maybe he thought because it was something smaller, they'd get away fly with under it. the radar. Was, yeah, um, maybe he's just an idiot. Maybe he did come up with Sonic. <laughs> yeah. It's all just a fluke up to this point. He's like, I have no clue Sorry, how it I is, got it. It is, sad. <laughs> it is, it is like it's not sad. Know, it's just, sad. it's just super interesting. I think it's like it's, just, it's super weird. It's like a, <laughs> it's like a Trivial Pursuit question or something in a few it years. Is, yeah, it's like yeah, it what famous <laughs> video game creator all, got locked up for two years for insider trading? So this will be in uni quiz nights for <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah. decades to come. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just like whenever people like, get asked or you think like, how do you know so much like useless? video game shit this is one of those stories that's just like how do you know that i thought you were <laughs> going to say this podcast will give you all the oh useless yeah yeah video this, game shit this podcast go, is yeah, just a combination yeah. of useless video game shit compiled together in a weekly format <laughs> but who's yeah, next do you think oh, K- oh kojima my, will do something no, fucked up at some point plan. the guy behind crash bandicoot oh, so yeah. Can, yeah. God, can't be he can't be guilt-free right <laughs> hopefully it'll be bobby kotick Oh yeah, <laughs> that's realistic though. Oh. He's actually a demon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just feel like at some point Kojima will do something for one of his games, and then the police will be like, "No, no, you can't do actually yeah. do that. That's that's either it, uh, fraud or that's either fraud yeah, we, it, or it's heavily like frowned." He'll upon. organize some kind of a, uh, ARG where he actually kills a person. Live on <laughs> I was camera. gonna say it would be it would be, <laughs> it'll promote be death stranding weird. too. <laughs> yeah, it it won't be it won't be anything like fraud or like oh he inside the trade it will be like no body mutilation or something. <laughs> yeah, he hacks into the Pentagon and releases 
classified documents. Yeah, he, he uploads a new trailer for Death Stranding 2 onto official government Pentagon websites. Mm. And they're like, what the fuck? No, straight to prison for you. <laughs> Tweaks, tweets out the launch codes for the world's nuclear arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To the first 100 people that finish Death Stranding 2. <laughs> yeah. Kojima. Yeah. You have the nuke codes. Do with them what you wish. The one person just instantly launches nukes. <laughs> yeah, rest in peace, Yuji Naka. Right. Um <laughs> Uh, what else we got this week? A few like smaller ones. Um, Do you reckon while he's gonna in prison, he'll spend his time developing the next Sonic game? Or well, oh, there's a joke there, isn't there, oh. about like outrunning? He can't out. He can't outrun the law. <laughs> there's something there. I don't know. Someone, he was, he was, can do something with that. He he was seen being ushered into the back of a police car, shouting, "Gotta go fast!" <laughs> <laughs> no more chili dogs for him. <laughs> Maybe we get more chili dogs. Who knows? I don't know what Japanese prisons Ugh. like. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Metal Gear Solid Delta, which you can't call it Metal Gear Solid 3, because it's not Metal Gear Solid 3, it's, it's a Metal weird Gear tri- Solid Triangle. Metal Gear Solid Delta Snake Eater um, is reusing all the original voices from the original game um, without any changes. What? Yeah, so I guess this is a way to get around just, I don't know. Hiring new um, voice actors? Or not even rehiring new ones, just rehiring old ones, potentially, to do the same voices. They're just using straight up the old voices. Um I think I don't know. I I can't well, remember the quality. Iconic, they are like, iconic. A lot of them are. Okay. Um, but I don't really know how I feel about this. I would have liked to see, even if it's the same voice actors and actresses, um, a new take on it. But this game is also quite old. Voices can change, you know, over time. I think I think if you're if this is a proper like RE4 uh, remake, I. I think yeah, it's kind of a misstep, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Well, it's tricky as well because Snake's voice since MGS3 has changed. It used to be David Hater in this game. Um, yeah. But in Metal Gear Solid 5, if you remember, there was a big debacle about it because they got rid of him um, and they got. Ke- was it Keith Sunderland? Sutherland? Sunderland? Keith, Keith, Keith Sutherland. Keith Sutherland. They got him instead. And there was a big uproar, and then he hardly spoke in the game anyway, which is the whole thing's really <laughs> weird. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe having like Keith or something, even I can't even say his name. Having him in the game might have been what? interesting, at least if you're remaking it. Like try something what? different. I don't know. Yeah. What they should yeah. have done is they should have released the game, new voices, but have like a uh, a free download of original voice pack and then it just plays yeah, you know, yeah. that would have been fun like keep the lines basically the same in the same cadence and stuff but well it's tricky because like... games are now basically like they're scripted and and scened out like movies right mm-hmm. so yeah, it's, it's exactly. not always as easy as like here's an alternate voice pack it's like for cutscenes and stuff that just doesn't work you can't you can't make the cutscene twice well but... well they they could make it work but that's a that's you know, that's a lot more work on Konami. Yeah. They probably honestly, don't want to do. But honestly, I think it would be so fucking cool to have, like, new voices, like, change it up, like, uh, Resident Evil 4 style, and then just have, like, jank, like, original voices, <laughs> bad lip syncing. <laughs> yeah, because it's like those don't original voices, it, depending on how they're doing this remake, maybe it's just shot for shot or something, but it's like those, even then, those old voices are going to have, like, a, a tone to them, right? Because... Especially Metal Gear ones is always that. Yeah. Or, or again, the, it, ga- it, the game's old. Like I don't know yeah. the, what the quality of those original files like of the original voice recordings. If it's like yeah, what is it, like PS2? I, I I'm gonna throw out a random date. I'm probably wrong, but like you know, like 20 years ago or something. Yeah. Um. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> oh, that's you know what we are. We have the power of the internet. <laughs> Let's have a look. Um, Metal Gear Solid 3. But yeah, I mean, it, it feels like that's like weirdly limiting on this remake to just have these to not 2004. Oh, I was so close. 19 years ago. Uh-huh. <laughs> like technology's changed. Those recordings might just be ass. Compared, you know, yeah. your, your your brain does a lot nostalgically. You know, roasting the goggles, goggles to remember certain things. They might not be as crisp as you remembered, but but also are those old. Voice actors, they gonna get paid for this? But that's the other thing, which is like, how does that all? Do they work? get royalties? Yeah, you should hope so. Or then, or again, I say you should hope so. You don't, don't they know what probably contract. got paid. Yeah, yeah. Don't know what they contract. got paid to do a job twenty years ago. We <laughs> yeah. paid. We paid you for 
your voice work. Yeah. Like we're just using it again. We've paid you for it. it doesn't matter if it's now being given to an audience <laughs> literally a hundred yeah, times the size. Situation. Like for example, it'd be like if they let's say they went and made a brand new game and started using uh, voice lines from you know the the old ver- the old game. It's an entirely new game, different game series. They started using it in that. They wouldn't be able to, right? Because although it's in the con- they did it under contract. It depends. It depends on what contract they signed. Yeah, because uh, you can put whatever I mean, you like yeah, in the contract. It, it could entirely yes, all but... those old recordings could entirely be Konami's property to do with whatever they want. With. Yeah, depending on the contract, they could fucking splice them and make a whole bunch of different things with them. I guess it just it just matters what they signed. Yeah, because I could. There's there is. I don't, again, we don't. I don't know personally, but it might just be you know, we are putting you under a contract to record voice lines for Metal Gear Solid 3 in 2004 and we own these voice lines this fu- what you are recording to do with what we wish to do with mm-hmm. now yes. or in the future but it would have to be under Metal Gear Solid 3 I guess not or, but it's, uh, I guess it depends on I guess it depends on what they're signing if you're just signing like we are using your voice yeah, lines so for my I, I get solids. that, but there, there'll also be uh, rights to protect I th- uh, I th- those people as well. Yeah, I think ultimately I don't know enough about this whole thing to say anything definitively. I'm just making assumptions. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm assuming that because they are confirming that this is what they are doing, <laughs> they, um, <laughs> whether they're paying them royalties or not, like it is... A legal thing that can. Yeah, and I is presume happening. this isn't just the boldest way to break the law. Someone, someone at Konami <laughs> yeah. is now going to prison. Yeah, just everyone comes out. Kojima, like... this is how he's going to prison. Just, <laughs> they'll just pin it all on him. It's interesting though. It's very interesting. It is. Yeah, that is weird. Yeah, yeah. Uh, last tiny little one. This is a very quick one, but I just thought it was quite interesting. Um, there's uh, Duke Nukem <laughs> uh, official artwork. Or like a remake or a remaster that they're doing. Oh, let that series die. <laughs> no, 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 I get this. So the artwork that they commissioned for this game uh, was AI generated. And they didn't know. Because, you know, the person AI generated and said, you know, here's, here's your thing. Uh, so they went out with it, put it on Twitter, you know, official artwork for our upcoming Duke Nukem project. And everyone's like, you, what the fuck is this? You know, it's just like AI generated, right? <laughs> Got an extra how finger. Did, how did they figure it out? Was it the hands? Uh, it, well, it's the thing is about it is if you look at it for more than two seconds, you can see how like really weird it is. Like the gun angle, the hands, the hands are weird. The, gun. the guns really weird. The feet like oh. blend into the rock and just disappear. This is very visual for people that are listening. I'm very sorry. Um, but yeah, like the, the on the gun up here, the finger. There's just no like trigger. It just goes through the gun. Yeah. So they've come out and uh, like apologized and been like, oh, sorry, we didn't know. And everyone's just like, oh, this is so stupid. <laughs> like, why is this a scenario that's happening right now? <laughs> Could you imagine <laughs> having to be the one at a company being like, oh, I need to check artwork to make sure it's not AI generated. Yeah. Well, well, just... that's, I was going to say, the, the shocking thing to me is that literally anybody cared enough to check. <laughs> Whether a Duke Nukem promotional yeah, there, there art will was be, AI or not, like, who cares? There will be project managers and stuff which should be checking this stuff. Yeah, it's like it's a it's a proper Duke Nukem one and two remastered game, and somehow this not only slipped through the cracks but got put into official marketing like hit. And this is hmm. like you know it's like supposedly key art. And it's just but it's like, like I but I'm I don't I didn't notice until you pointed out like if I just saw that. No, screenshot no, slide across no, my I, desk. I, I think I'd be if, like, for me, the hands immediately stood out. It's it's got a look, if I'm not, it's got a look to it. I feel like it's just you can just kind of tell. But if I'm not checking for, if I'm not even thinking about somebody naffing me off with AIR, like yeah, I would. Yeah, notice. I think as a, as a manager on this game or whatever that's supposed to Aaron. catch these things, you might just be like, you know, you just assume that you're working with professionals, yeah. right? Like, I wouldn't notice. See, I've got Erin on the line. She okay. also she says she wouldn't notice unless she was specifically looking for it. Or maybe this is just the thing can't, that... You like, can't argue. I played my trump card. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm, no, I'm, I'm fucked up. Yeah, she's an artist. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I, don't, I don't argue with the architect. Erin uh, is banned from ever coming onto the podcast. Sorry, Erin. It made, made us look stupid. <laughs> <laughs> they 
we've banned you from the podcast. Also, <laughs> this artwork, yeah, it doesn't look fantastic anyway, right? It's Duke Nukem, that's kind of the point. Yeah, it's supposed to look like... It yeah, looks like Duke it's supposed, supposed to, be... to be, like, silly... It looks like it's supposed to be sprayed on the side of a van. That's... <laughs> Blow it's it not out supposed your to be ass. I just it's not like a like a Blizzard promotional bit of art or something. It's... <laughs> yeah, I know, but it's like two thirds of this image is just nothing. Empty space. Yeah. It's yeah. I, I, I know. I just, I'm moving past it. No, yeah. Oh, Sam's over it, so I'm. Over oh it. yeah, the gun's bent. Yeah. No. The, the, yeah. The, I see the, it. the angle on the gun is like all wrong, and yeah. Like yeah. what's? Hang on. Up here, look. Like the the what you call it? I'm gonna get this wrong. People get mad. The magazine. It's like coming out yeah. towards the camera, but the gun is looking away. The gun is facing away. away. But then the, hand, the scope hit... is like, man, oh, it's one of those, like, the more you look at it, exactly. the more fucked up it gets. Yeah, yeah. They're like the barrel of the gun, like, starts turning into a knife or some <laughs> shit. Like, it's all fucking weird, man. You can all explain this away by just being shitty Duke Nukem art. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, how much money do I'm they annoyed have to you're for correct. artists? Like, I'm annoyed you're correct. <laughs> they paid a guy on Fiverr to draw Duke Nukem. Yeah. Like, what, what do you expect? Uh, excuse me, guy we commissioned. Why is the muzzle of the gun turning into a knife? Uh, here's your answer. Uh, blow it out your ass. <laughs> here's your answer. I'm seven. <laughs> Uh, eat shit and die, basically. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> All right. Uh, there's a few others, but we're we're getting on. Apple are making a freaky new headset. Look at that image for a second. Look how That's fucking weird that is. is That's a Black Mirror episode, isn't it? It if actually, it, it actually is. Apple's. Uh, we're not going to talk about this because we're running out of time. But if you want to see some weird Black Mirror dystopian shit, watch the official Apple promo video. It's like ten minutes long for the Apple Vision Pro. It's their new headset. It's really fucking weird. It's cool tech. It is unbelievably cool, but it's so weird, and I think I hate it. Mm. Like, taking core memory pictures of your kids wearing these scuba goggles and shouting, hey Siri, <laughs> take a picture. It's like, oh, I hate it. I hate it. Uh, we'll all be walking around looking like that in ten years. <laughs> I like that now. They're stealing my fashion. <laughs> 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 Alright then, uh, What's coming out, Steve? Let's do some upcoming stuff. Oh, okay. So, uh, since this is Tuesday, like, oh, and we covered Tuesday. last week, and we covered the games that are coming out tomorrow. We'll uh, skip straight ahead till Thursday, the eighth. Okay. Um, we have twenty minutes till dawn's full release. It's coming out of early access. Oh, oh. that's the game we always forget the name of. Yes, this well, is the Vampire Survivor. This is the big Vampire Survivor one that like came out soon was, after. Yeah, this was the one where it was like. When you were done with Vampire Survivors, like, is there anything? Oh, yeah, this what, is what else is there I can play? A really well done one. It's really good. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. I might. Uh, that'll be a good game to stick on my Steam Deck. I think I might have yes. a look at that. Um, play that on the plane. It's a good idea. Or, yeah. Also, on the eighth, we have uh, Summer Games Fest is doing its big reveal trailers. I don't think we're doing anything for that because, fortunately, Josh is going away and it's his fault. So send him. Did angry you hate Did you mail. say fortunately Josh is going away? I said unfortunately. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm. Uh, okay. I'm on a plane uh, tomorrow, which will be Wednesday. If anyone listening, um, yeah, to Barcelona for a week. So I'm going to be watching all this mm. from a beach. We can we can talk about all this next week though. Yes, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely cover this all next week. So yeah. um, we won't be watching um, it live, but we'll be definitely talking about it next week. Mm -hmm. um, on the ninth, we have a blaster beat. Uh, this beat. is a PvP rhythm shooter with up to eight players, and I think it might be free to play going by Steam. Um, so this is like your rhythm shooters. We've had like Hell was it Hell Diver, uh, Metal Hellsinger. Metal Housing, we've had a couple of others. Um, uh, what's that game that you played that I talked oh, about? Was... Uh, no, I've, it's lost Hi me. Hi-Fi Rush? Hi-Fi Rush? No, that's, that, wait, that's wait. not a shooter, but it is a rhythm no, no, game. No, this is Beat Blaster. I said Blaster Beat. Oh, right. Oh. <laughs> Blaster... This looks cool, though. When's this yeah. coming out? Blaster Beat. Oh, two years ago. It's already out. Blaster yeah. Beat. Uh... Beat Beat Blaster comes up first on Google. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Am I going crazy? It, it was on Steam. Maybe go to the Steam page and just type in the search bar there. But it was called Blaster Beat, I believe. Oh my god! Have I fucked it up? You might. Sorry have... for being scuffed. Blaster Beat. Are you thinking Blaster... of Master no, Blaster? No, no. There, there is something here. It's one word. <laughs> is, is... Wait, a <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The famous. Yeah. 
Oh, this look okay. This is way different to what. Yeah, so this this is an eight v eight uh rhythm shooter. Uh, it's obviously <laughs> trailer doesn't do too much about the music, but um, yeah, it, it might be free to play according to like. Yeah, I think it is. Bar. I want to point out that the other one that I found was also exactly as you were describing up to a certain point. It was also yeah. I, was, <laughs> I was convinced. I was yeah, so yeah. convinced that I had found the correct game. <laughs> oh, okay. Also on the ninth, we have a uh, Grey Hill incident. This is a survival horror game, but huh. it's about aliens. Oh, I hate that image. I hate that image. <laughs> I absolutely hate it. <laughs> the game looks a little <laughs> looks like <it'd> be interesting, <laughs> but because been it's like I'm like, oh, I've not seen a horror game about aliens, like you know, like actual, like you know, crop dusting aliens. Or that whatnot. Woody Harrelson. Who knows? It does look like Woody Harrelson. It does. That's a good it? shout. Yeah. 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 This, they look like the aliens from Scary Movie Three, <laughs> which yeah. are like, oh my god, oh, I ha I actually hate this. <laughs> that's that's way scarier than I feel like it should be. That's what I mean. It looks dumb, but then you're like, oh, it's actually kind of. They're all wearing like kinda? tin foil hats and shit. What is this game? <laughs> 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 this is so bizarre. Uh... Yeah. There's a bit in the trailer where so he's just beating one of these. <laughs> give me a timestamp. Give, give me a timestamp. With, with a pipe, with a lead pipe. Give me a timestamp. It's like, I don't know, it's like 20 seconds in, 30 seconds in or something. I want to see an alien getting this shit beaten at him with a metal pipe. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. Hold on. It's coming up. I'm sorry for anyone listening. I just, I have to. <laughs> there it is. He just smacks the shit out with a pipe. <laughs> <laughs> okay he is on... not observing first contact no. protocols is he <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna play this <laughs> good okay on the 11th uh we've got no games for a while but on the 11th we've got the xbox showcase um on the 12th we've got the ubisoft showcase sorry for skipping ahead um on the 13th we've got the dead by daylight update which i'm so excited for what did we oh okay because yeah, you, cause, cause you were listing off like showcases, I thought you meant like another Dead by Daylight showcase. No, 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 sorry, yeah, this is just the update. And then the last game is on the 14th, we have a game called Dubium. How do you spell that? What is that? D-U-B-I-U-M. Uh, this is a survival, dece uh, survival deception game like Among Us, but it's with five players and one of them, uh, it's like you're trying to escape a like spaceship, but one of them is you know a sussy imposter yeah one is sus uh, but i was like this is it's like this is like full 3d it looked actually like pretty well done and also i was like interested by the limit of five players because usually these games are like you know yeah have like as many players as you want yeah yeah so i was like this this could be a, like a fun one maybe you know you hate survival deception games Josh, but they make like, my oh. heart beat fast <laughs> could be fun <laughs> this looks this looks interesting yeah Keep an eye on it. Um, yeah, that, that's what's coming out for the next week. Oh, hell yeah. Well, there's, there's like a few interesting ones there. That alien one in particular, for some reason, I just find <laughs> unbelievably funny. It really caught your eye, didn't it? It really, yeah. for us, I don't know. Getting horrified by that alien, like jump scared on Google, into <laughs> slapping it with a metal pipe, for some reason, is just like, okay, okay, I'm, I'm fully watching now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What was it called, Steve? Um, uh, Grey Hill Incident. I'm just going to have that shitty trailer playing in the background whilst we do outro because it was so funny. Yeah, there we go. All right, I guess we should probably call it a night then, right? I guess we're all done here. Yeah. I guess you all want to go back and play some more Diablo. I, I've been jonesing this entire time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll, let you, I'll let you go play that. And, okay, we're done here. Thank you for watching, everybody. We're going to go let everyone else play Diablo, so we're going to say goodbye. My name is Josh. You can find me at Bottlerworks on everything. What about you, Will? Um, hello, I'm Will. You can, you know where to find me. Ah, uh, Steve. I'm Quick Quicks. That's Q U I K W I X on all good social media. And Sam. Hello, I'm Sam. Hello. Okay, we're done. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>